Comment 504 traffic behind the left being an Embraer 135 to the parallel only that maintains a separation from you. 504. Right. Okay, the airplane, sir. 2828.8 Centuries ago, famed mathematician Katherine Johnson wrote, The whole idea of going into space was new and daring. There were no textbooks, so we had to write them. Now, the United Federation of Planets stands on a new brink of exploration and learning, yet again pushing beyond the bounds of contemporary understanding, and for a new dawn proclaim proudly once again, these are the voyages of Strategic Operation Log, Commander Chevron. 
I have been dispatched, along with Dr. Haskins and Lieutenant Arax, to the USS Binary. The first officer has been murdered, and Captain Rex has been implicated in the investigation. The binary security chief, Lieutenant Horgan, has recused himself from the investigation as the first officer was his half-sister. Captain Threx has decided the best option was to send me over to assume command of the binary while the investigation is handled by our security chief. While I don't personally know the captain, I am aware of his reputation and I know of his connection to many of the crew of the Serenitis as he was formerly the first officer prior to Commander Khalada. While I cannot see this concluding with his guilt, I must maintain a neutral stance until the facts have been collected. Hello everyone okay. and welcome to the voyages of here on Rook and Rasp. Uh, we'll be following the story of the USS Serenitis as it continues its mission to explore the Gamma Quadrant. We're using the Star Trek Adventures RPG rules from Modiphius, and as a reminder, uh, we are in no way affiliated with Modiphius. We just really enjoy their game. Uh, I'm Matt. I'll be running the game tonight. Uh, joining me tonight is uh, Robin Jacoba as Commander Chevrin, Sean Parks as Lieutenant Commander uh, Keith Haskins, Danny Delisle as Lieutenant Rosrin Irex. And uh, we have a special guest joining us tonight, uh, David Mc McFarland as Captain Marzon Rex, uh, Captain of the USS Binary. Uh, real quick, before we get too deep into this, uh, you guys have channels points that you can spend. Uh, momentum and Threat, you can both buy those. All you have to do is click uh, the the little button down below the chat. Looks like a looks like a uh, that thing you use as an investigator. Magnifying glass. Pen? There you go, a magnifying glass. <laughs> ah. Looks like a magnifying glass. There, you just click that; it'll <laughs> it'll uh, let you choose which one you want to spend. You do generate um, uh, channel points as you uh, watch for the night. Uh, if you're subscribed, or if you're if you follow, you you get more, and if you're subscribed, you get even more. Uh, so keep an eye on those. Uh, feel free to spend those at any time. I'll be keeping an eye on chat to make sure that I don't miss any spins there. Um, having said that, I haven't looked at chat yet. I will in just a second, though. Yeah. Um, uh, also, keep in mind, you can tip for uh, creating NPCs. You can do that by uh, sending us some bits. Uh, the more bits you send, the the more details will we put into the NPC. You can just name a, name a person, and that's perfectly great. Doesn't take a whole lot of bits. But if you want to really impact the story, uh, it's a little bit more. And uh, we had one the last half of the season uh and we will forever miss uh lieutenant stern uh may she travel through the universe with uh the lady q uh lavernia um before we get uh to the story we are going to talk about the characters real quick uh starting with commander chevrin could you give us a basic description of your character Shabrin is an uh, approaching elderly Andorian man, so blue skin and white hair, a uh, little antenna popping up. Uh, he's of middling height, a bit thicker than average. Uh, he also has a robotic arm, leg, and eye on his right side from a, a crash he was in. Fantastic. Um, and then uh, Keed. Mr. Haskins, or Dr. Dr. Haskins. Dr. Haskins. Um, Can you give us a description? Keed is a half-human, half-Cleon, or half-Cleon, half-human, depending on who's talking to him. Um, he's he's 5'11". He's not as bulky as a Cleon, but he's definitely bulkier than your standard human. And is the doctor of the ship. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and then... Uh... Rosrin, can you give us a description, please? Absolutely. Rosrin Irax is uh, the chief of security, and he is a trill. And he is joined, but it's his first uh, it's first symbiont and the first host for both of them. And so it's an interesting experience. He is not very tall, um, kind of slight um, for trill, and but he is always impeccably put together. Uniforms always put up and ironed and cleaned. His hair is always like 
slicked back and and in place and he always stands with a very straight posture and everything um and so yeah he's small uh kind of fussy looking almost (laughs) because you know (laughs) sure uh and then uh finally our special guest uh david can you tell us what marzon rex looks like marzon is also a trill uh he is a little over six foot um athletic build uh in his late 20s um fun loving jovial guy to be around uh in normal circumstances can be very serious when the time calls fantastic oh we've already got a threat by thanks john we appreciate it john (laughs) I, I appreciate what? it, John. We haven't even done anything. <laughs> John wants to get it started. <laughs> yeah, John wants to get it started seriously. Uh, no, this is great. Uh, so that'll put us at officially nine threat. We started at eight, uh, two for each player, and then we have four momentum in the pool, one for each player. Uh, give me just one second. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, that time of year where... Uh, knows this run uh so uh we find the four the three of you um on the runabout themes uh with um one of the other crew members with you as well um good old uh stan winkler has come along (laughs) yeah he's piloting the ship poor guy um (laughs) i've got sorry lieutenant stan winkler uh, Winkler. he's uh what now i feel so safe (laughs) <laughs> exactly exactly um oh hey we got a momentum buy from uh from marzon over there uh <laughs> prepping prepping to try and not uh not get uh charged with murder that's good Look, Roger's uh, trying to work with winkler it's just this long process yeah yeah uh so <laughs> minkler is with you as well um so it's the four of you on the thames it's not a very large uh runabout just enough for the four of you, maybe a few other people. Um, and then there's, it's been set up in case uh, it's been set up to uh, act as kind of like a transport. So it's got rooms in the back for the four of you to uh, stay in if you need to. Um, so you can kind of hear the hums of the engine on the, the things you come into uh, the system that the binary has stopped at and kind of uh, dropped space anchor, I guess. Um, the binary it's itself is deep in the system near an Android belt or an asteroid belt. But, uh, once you hit the system, you kind of dropped out of warp just for safety procedures. Um, so the three of you are there on the ship. Uh, let, let's talk about what you're doing to prepare for this. Um, we'll start with Rosrin since, uh, this is kind of Rosrin's show. Yeah. Rosrin's a little, uh, you know, he's, he's like, okay, this is big responsibility here okay and and everything so he wants to get and look over as much as they've sent over already that's what sure. he's gonna be doing in the run about like any you know statements they've sent over you know any evidence at the scene anything that they already have he wants to look at and he's What's gonna be so? looking for any holes specifically in in stuff they might not have gotten yet so well, we have another momentum buy that's going to cap us for right now at six. Uh, so hold off until we start spinning those. Don't worry, that'll happen real soon. Uh, Rosrin, can I get you to give me an insight security roll? Um, okay. I would a- say I'm not. none of your focuses really apply right now, I don't think. This is just kind of going through the reports right. you've got. Right. So that would be a 14 for me. Yeah, so uh, we're going to set the difficulty at uh, three. It's going to be a tough one here. As you're reading through it, it uh, just to see what uh, what all's there. Can if there's I anything use, deeper. Can I, can I use one of my values, please? Uh, lives are sacred since this is a murder investigation. He, yeah, absolutely. No, if you want to. Like he's, wanna... he's like, we need to bring whoever did this to justice because obviously they don't hold yeah. secret so if you want to go ahead and spend your determination to do that you can go ahead and get the crit and uh that'll put you at two successes and then just roll your dice like normal all right perfect i'm gonna do that a 20 and a three. Oh, i like that 20 um nice. that's fantastic <laughs> so uh yeah. for our listeners at home uh 
the the uh, 20 hits our complication. Uh, complications mean that I get to modify the scene accordingly. So, uh, Rosrin, as you're kind of reading through the reports, um, the things you note are uh, there was a phaser discharge that struck the first officer in the heart while on kill and killed him. Um, the, or I'm sorry, her, it's a first officer was a her, the, uh, weapons locker had been unlocked by the first officer, but it was relocked using Marzon's, uh, security signature. Hmm. And the phaser itself is still missing. Um, there, there have been, there, there are notes about sensor sweeps and anything else, just in case something else was weird. Uh, Marzon is being held in his, uh, quarters. Um, not like, not deeply under guard, but there are security, there's a security officer out fr- outside and, um, he is considered the suspect right now. Not even like one of several, but like the only suspect that they really have at this point. Um, the ship itself is a small vessel. It's maybe a tenth of the size of the Serenitis. It's got a crew of 80. So you're going from a crew of about 1,300 people on the Serenitis to a crew of 80 people. So a lot of them do double duty. So like the first officer might also be the pilot or might also be the science officer. It just depends on what they're doing. The, the ship itself is a science-focused ship. Um, it's currently outfitted for... Um, planetary um mapping so just kind of getting uh ideas of what the what the planets look like they're doing a little bit of spatial or astral cartography and uh that that's their primary mission right now uh is there anything else you want to look for in there anything specific i guess um basically looking for um do they have any theoretical reason or statements about why someone would want to kill the first officer? Lieutenant uh, Horgan was vocal, but not disrespectful when disagreeing with the captain. Um, but beyond that, Marzen's not known to drink, um, not, not usually keeps a pretty level head and is more likely to burst out in laughing than burst out in anger. It's just not kind of who he is there. There have been, you've read over some of his reports of previous action. Um, He's usually the one to take action when needed, but keep a level ahead about it. Um, Mm -hmm. And even in the war, that was, that was a big part of why he was promoted to, to commander and then to captain is that the level headedness was exactly what they wanted in a, in the captain out out here. Mm-hmm. Um, the lieutenant, the or I'm sorry, the uh, first officer. Um, also, same thing. Very much known to known to kind of be level headed, very studious, mm-hmm. very uh, like no detail really missed her eye. She she'd see something wrong from about a mile away, and then move to fix it. Um, didn't always agree with uh, the captain, but it was more of a how do we get this done the right way, not a you're wrong for trying to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, just a, 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 an argument of method, necessarily, not necessarily of ideal. Um, well, first of all, Roswin appreciates the attention to detail. So, you of know, course, yeah. it's a shame this person is not around anymore. <laughs> but definitely Roswin appreciates that. Too. How long had uh, she been the first officer uh, about about three months. So about the same time that, that you came on to the Serenitis, Rex was uh, promoted onto the binary. The binary actually brought out some of the crew that, that came out before you guys. Um, and Marzon was promoted to captain of the binary and she served under him from that point forward. She was, uh, she was the, the acting captain for the binaries trip out to the Gamma Quadrant. Okay. Um, the only other note that you, the only other thing that you see that's noteworthy is that the uh, the security chief, um, his family on Beta Z has a tendency to declare blood oath, something where he may or may not take 
uh, violent action. So far, he's acting like a Starfleet officer. He's purposefully recused himself. Um, but someone killed his sister, and at the moment, it looks like it's the captain. So that can become a problem. Mm hmm. Okay. Rosrin will ponder all of this <laughs> in the runabout, looking very, uh, looking very deep in thought. <laughs> uh, Keen, why don't we have you do an insight medicine as well? Yeah. I was going to say I wanted would be reviewing the initial autopsy reports and anything that they would have sent over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so the doctor, the doctor of the ship. Uh, I'm sorry, it was uh, insight and medicine. Uh, it's okay. going to be a difficulty one. Uh, okay, it's been a day, so I'm looking to roll under the total of insight and medicine, right? Correct. That's two successes. Fantastic. So you normally generate a momentum, but you're capped right now. You can spend that momentum as a reminder to buy um, extra information. Would you like to do that? Since we're capped, and if nobody has anything against that, yeah, I think some additional information would be Go great. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, so the, the doctor is a human named uh, Ambrose Addington III. He's a lieutenant commander. Uh, he is uh, fastidious. Like, uh, his notes are impeccable. He gives far too much information. Um, he gives far too much information for basic uh, medical things. Like, you know way more about uh, what's going on with the person than you need to as you're reading through the notes. Um, but also he's very, because of that, he seems to, he seems to pick up on things that others may not. Um, the notes that he has on this are real simple though. The, the phaser discharged, the body shows that it hit him, hit uh, the first officer in the chest. The burn pattern is appropriate for kill the, the kill setting. And, uh, there was there was no chance to even resuscitate the, the the body was the person was dead before they hit the ground so when they say that when he notes that the burn pattern is consistent is it consistent with federation phasers yes okay um and you want extra information do you have any other questions besides that that might lead us towards that extra information um well i think rosman would have already had probably shared details with us like where the body was found the positioning of the body yeah you would have had access to that i'm sure yeah um additional information you know what i'll tell you what i've got an idea what to give you okay um as you're looking through the the medical files uh you happen to flip over to you accidentally flip over to a report by the doctor who is actually kind of acting like the the ship psychologist at the time because again small ship double duty you don't have a you don't have a therapist necessarily in a ship that small uh or at least a dedicated one um and there are notes from two crew members who believe they saw something non-federation moving in the hallways both of them were on third well, on like the, the the late shift both of them were going from one place to another in darkened hallways but both of them think they saw something and they were on two separate uh, shifts uh, a couple of days apart and both of them were prior to the murder the murder happened uh, about 36 hours ago when, when they said something non-federation as in not a member of that ship or as uh, in something unrecognizable not a member of that ship uh, okay. It was humanoid for sure. Uh, looked more um, more Cardassian or maybe Jim Hadar with the kind of like the the thicker, harsher skin, um, but still built slimly, not like a Klingon. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I will point this out to Roser and let him know what the doctor's report said, saying that yeah, you know, because I don't think she would have access to the medical records because that's all confidential. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let her let him know that that there was possibly something on the ship prior to the murder. Um, it was from Third Watch crew members. The doctor noted it. I don't think he thinks that this is 
possibly a, any kind of suspect, but it does seem odd that these crew members noticed possibly a Jim Hadar or Kardashian slinking about the corridors of the ship. Do you have the name of these crewmen on there? <laughs> on the report? They they are on the report. Uh taking a quick look at the at the two crew members like they were both in the war they both have effects from the war on their mental health not necessarily that that this is some sort of um psychotic break or anything but this this is a th this could be attributed to being tired in the middle of the night and thinking they saw something and the oh, thing that God. scares them the most in the gamma quadrant might be those things that makes sense. Yeah. So in the runabout, Roswin's going to turn to Commander Chevrin and say, uh, Commander, it might, it might be beneficial for you to speak to these crewmen and determine it, how they feel or, or what they saw and, and anything from that. I think that might fall into your more your purview. <laughs> my, my interviewing style is a little more direct than maybe needed in this situation. Yes, I will uh, take that under advisement and make sure to make uh, plans for meetings with them. Commander, um, pardon, uh, but these two crew members were veterans of the war, so we might want to handle these interviews with some tact because we don't want them, we don't want to make them think that they're losing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chevron will sort of uh, flex his robotic hand on his cane. Yes, I'm I do know something of the of the wars, but I do appreciate your input. Uh, after about 45 minutes of flying through subspace at, at full impulse, uh, you, or not subspace, through space at full impulse, words are hard. Uh, you guys uh, arrive at the binary. Uh, everything looks fine on the outside of the ship. Um, they are near an asteroid field, um, which is between the second and third uh, planets around this uh, the star in this system. Um, you are hailed by uh, by the ship as soon as you are kind of within a proper hailing range, um, and uh, a kind of short, grumpy-looking Tellarite. Uh, uh, is is there in front of you? He says, "This is uh, Commander Glovjog of the USS Binary. I am the acting first officer. Uh, am I speaking with uh, Commander Chevron? Uh This is he. Yes. Good. Um, we're ready to have you beam over at any time. Um, let us know when you're prepared. Uh, is Minkler coming with us, or is he?" I, I I am not the ranking officer here. That's you guys' call. Well, I didn't know if, I didn't know what standard operating procedure was. Uh, yeah, would... Minkler Minkler is one of my security, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, Roswin will <laughs> will want him. Well, Roswin will suggest if no one if no one mm -hmm. says anything or somebody asks, like he'll say, uh, you know, I can take Minkler with me. It'll be good for him to learn how to All conduct right. an investigation. Uh, do we need him to land the ship, or are we just gonna sort of? No, no, uh, you'll just beam over uh, okay. and the ship will stay there. Um, and the ship, like, of all the things you're going to worry about is when it's sitting next <laughs> to the another Federation ship, it, there's no chance it's going to get taken. Okay. Nothing like that. So the Nova class itself uh, is only, like, eight decks. It's not a big ship. And, like, two of those decks are, like, engineering, and that's it. <laughs> so uh, you uh, beam into what is their only transporter room. Um and you are met by uh, the commander. Uh, he stands maybe five foot two. Um, and he says, uh, Commander, Commander, Lieutenant, uh, where can I take you first? Um, well, I believe that we should probably speak to the captain. Fantastic. As the first part. Uh there is a junior officer operating the transport transporter and he leans mm -hmm. over and says something quietly to uh, the commander. And he says, ah, yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, I forgot protocol. Uh, commander Chevron, I hand over uh, command of the USS binary to you computer. Note the date and time. 
and then he gives his clearance code, um, and then he waits for you to do, to do the same. Yeah. And our, yeah, this is Commander Chevrin taking control of the USS Binary. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, I will be, I, I will take you to the captain, mm -hmm. and then I will find my way back to the ship, or back to the, the bridge so that you yeah. have your time. Um, I will also request that the sort of the ready room or war room be made available for um, an investigation headquarters type thing. Absolutely. Uh, I will have that uh, prepared for you as well. Thank you. Uh, so you guys step out of the transporter room, pass the door to go onto the bridge and go into the, the captain's uh, uh, like room. Uh, his uh, what do you call that? His bunk. Quarters. His quarters. Thank you. Man, words are hard tonight. Uh it by it's a small ship. I mean, like the the you're on deck one, and there's the first officer's quarters, the captain's quarters, the bridge and the transporter room are all up here, and that's that's it. That like it's real compact, but like not the captain's quarters are smaller than what uh Lieutenant Rosrin has. Comparatively. Um, uh, so the, the security officer standing outside the door, uh, nods when he sees you, uh, he opens the door for you and then, um, inside is, uh, Captain Rex. Uh, so captain, what do you look like right now? Um, sitting there, probably reading a book, uh, uniform in, uh, leisurely mode. So, uh, Captain Rex, my name is Commander Chevrin, and this is uh, Lieutenant Irax and Dr. Haskins from the USS Serenitis. Welcome to the binary. Um, good to see you. Captain, it's good to see you again. I'm glad Captain, you're here. Pleasure to meet you. Well, pleasure under the circumstances, that is. True. Well, I suppose we should get down to the brass tacks then. Um, Lieutenant Irax, uh, the investigation is yours. Uh, Captain, I suppose we should start at the at the beginning. Um, what is your recollection of the, the first officer and any information you can have about the date of the murder or your whereabouts at the time? Anything would be helpful. Sure. Oh, Matt, what would I know? Uh, you were in your ready room uh, going over some reports from the science officer. Um, your, it's not that you don't know science. I, I want to make sure that's clear. Like uh, Starfleet recruits the best of the best, but it is not your area of expertise. You're good at talking to people. You're good at commanding ships. You're good at piloting ships, but there's a lot of information here and you take more time than normal than, than, than a science officer does to go over it just to make sure that you're not missing anything that they would see right away. So you spend a little more time, especially on these uh, like these surveys, a little more time going over things to make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary that you don't, that you should uh, pass along. Um, but at the time you were there alone, but the weapons locker was only, you know, a deck away. It's not that hard to go from one place to another on a ship this size. Now, you said that it was closed with my code. Did I close it myself? Do not, I remember that? You did not. You, okay. do, you have no recollection of doing any of that. All right, so those would be the important details I would bring up then. Do you have, going with uh, your state... Do you, one, have any idea of who might want to harm the first officer and why? Or two, how someone might have gotten a hold of your code? No member of my crew would want to have harmed them. Not, not that I would be aware. It's, it's a small crew. I know them all. I picked most of them personally. Uh, mm -hmm. There was no personal beefs. As far as someone getting my codes, no, that's what bothers me the most. There's something else is going on, on my ship, and that's what bugs me. 
has there been a system scan done to see if there happens to be any computer uh he's gonna ask the captain so rosrin's asking captain rex if um there had been any recent computer uh scans done to see if maybe there's something in there that would be like mining data or anything we won regular scans and have not been reported anything unusual but you may want to dig into it some more so um according to the ship's logs the last uh the last diagnostic that would have been high enough to catch anything that was way off was done about a week ago, but that is appropriate for the schedule. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, Rajan's going to make a note to uh, go ahead and request another diagnostics on the computer system. And he's also going to make a note to request any um video or audio uh surveillance around the areas and even in the rooms next to and around the room where the murder took place as well so he's going to be doing that in his pad while the other two you know if they have anything they want to so you're gonna you're gonna head down okay so uh you you're heading down to go look over the scene again or look over the scene uh uh let's uh where are you headed I'm going to head to the, probably also to the records areas, because uh, I want to review mission logs okay. of the last few missions, because I know we've encountered some weird things out <laughs> out here, yeah. and I want to sort of check in on what they've been up to. And You can actually probably do that from the, the, uh, ready, like room. the, the ready room. Um, because any ship can access those, and you now have codes to do to get into anything. Yeah, since you're the captain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Doctor Haskins, where are you headed? I guess I'm heading down to sick bay to go look at the body. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> and Russian's going to be very perfunctory. His his you know once he has kind of his head on it when he leaves, you know it's like thank you, you know, just kind of humbled, <laughs> and then he kind of leaves very like so. It's kind of like <laughs> um, and all right, uh, and just. So I can track him. Where who is uh, Minkler going with? Uh, Minkler can come with me. He needs to learn Fantastic. how to assess a scene. So fantastic. You know. uh, Minkler, so you... Minkler is going as far away from Chevron as possible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, as far as I'm concerned, Minkler spends enough time in sick bay on the Serenitas. He doesn't need to spend any more time in the sick bay with. On this Fair ship. enough. Uh, so you go down to deck three mm-hmm. outside of one of the weapons lockers. Uh, it is kind of tucked away near the security office, um, but the security office is really just uh, a little a little hole in the wall office and a couple of uh, brig uh, units. Like there, there's not even enough room here that if something like if a fight broke out between the crew, you'd be hard pressed to hold anybody here more than just a couple of people. It's part of probably part of the reason why the captain is in his own quarters. Like he's clearly being fully cooperative, but also like, where else are you gonna put him? Um, so you give me, uh, you're gonna scan the area. Yes, definitely. Plot tricorder. So let's be- uh, let's say that Minkler is going to assist. Uh, so why don't we have uh, Sean? Why don't you roll for Minkler? Okay. Uh, we're gonna have you guys do reason and security. Um, okay. Minkler's total there is. 12. Well, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm sorry. It is a difficulty of uh, two. What were the two again? I'm sorry. Reason and security. Okay. So I rolled a 10 and a 12. So I guess that's two successes. You just roll one dice when you're assisting. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. We'll okay. take one of those successes. That's not a problem. Okay. That's fine. I will take a three and a 14. So that would be, um, and my, th- my, co- my thing was 13. So I guess the three is a critical. Is it a uh, no, you don't have a focus that would apply. Oh. I don't think. No, no, you're not. No, but, but the, that's still two total. That's what you needed. Uh, so the two of you scan the area. Um, you don't pick up anything out of the ordinary as far as the phaser or the ground or the phaser discharge or the ground goes. You don't. You. It is very clear that the phaser is not there. Um, Minkler just happens to scan, like accidentally scan. You know, this is 
what he does. Uh, <laughs> accidentally scan a wall, and uh, he says, uh, "Lieutenant, I um, this says that there is uh, non-Federation DNA here." All right, collect a sample of it for Doctor Haskins. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> Uh, he scans it again and, and gets the what he needs out of it. Um, and he says, "I, I don't, I don't see anything else here, though. Am I missing something? Like this seems pretty open and shut, doesn't it?" Well, you know, we don't. We have to follow all leads and look at all the evidence before we come to any conclusions. You're right. Uh, I just it. I mean, it's more of a who did it, not a what happened, right? That's what we're looking for. I think we are pretty clear on what happened, perhaps, but also keep your mind open because a lot of times some 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 people who are trying to get away with crimes will definitely try to make it look like something else in order to try to cover up what the actual incident was. So. So and and just to clarify here a little bit, your character is relatively young for a trill. Like, right, yeah. like you're almost right out of the, the academy. Practically, yes. <laughs> um, Minkler has been doing this for a couple of, probably several years at this point. And the only reason he's a lieutenant is because during war, people just get promoted because you, you have spots to fill. Mm -hmm. He's not an idiot, but he's not, he's not the best. He's the Barkley of the ship. We'll, we'll just call, we'll call it like it is. Oh. <laughs> just speak the truth <laughs> so yeah. uh yeah he uh he he takes a another quick look around and he says why would somebody lock the why would they lock it back that's a good question i mean it's it's so let's say that rex did it it's like he wants to get caught right Right. And in and in my mind, between us, that would more indicate his experience. Marzon Rex is not a, a stupid trill, <laughs> to put it bluntly. He's no, not I'm... unintelligent. And to think that if he were going to murder somebody, there's one of two options. Either he was trying to implicate himself so we wouldn't think it was him and wouldn't think he would be so sloppy, or two... It wasn't him, and somebody was trying to frame him in a very haphazard and sloppy manner. Well, this will this will be interesting. Uh, let's pop over to uh, the, the logs really quick. Uh, so, Chevron, this is this th we can do this one of two ways. I can set a really high difficulty, or we can make this an extended task where you're going to have to make a couple of rolls. Which would which would you rather do? I did with an extended task. Okay, so uh, we'll say that this is going to be uh, reason and security again. Uh, we'll we'll call it reason and command. Actually, um, I don't know. Federation protocol applies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that all apply. Um, you're gonna need um, you're gonna need at least two six. Or you're I'm sorry. You're gonna need a total of ten successes. Uh, within, I'd say, three rolls. Okay. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started on that. Uh, what is our momentum rating at right now? You are got capped at six. At six. Yeah, okay. Some of those. <laughs> yeah, that's already yeah. said for us to spend momentum so they can buy it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I will spend three momentum to get two bonus dice. They're cool. all justice seekers Ooh. in the comment. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Giving us momentum so we can pursue justice. Uh, okay, go ahead. Oh. And roll. Um, say, that say is a lot of successes. Oh, I was hoping for complications. That's fine. <laughs> no, no. I rolled a two, a three, a seven, and a 13, Ooh. all of which succeed. That's like six. Two of which are critical. Yeah, so six successes on your first roll. Uh, let's go ahead and go give your give me your second roll. Uh, do you right. want to spend any momentum again? Um, how many do I need in total? Uh, ten. So you're ten. more than halfway there. I would say at this point you're not living on a prayer, though. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let it roll with two dice. Cool. 
that is two more successes. Okay, that'll put you at eight. And then eight. last last roll, you need at least two to get the information you're looking for. I will go ahead and spend one momentum, leaving us with two for three dice. Yep. Uh, that is a three, a one, and a ten. I can move the camera and show you guys if you no, want. No, you're fine. Oh my gosh, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's another five. Uh, so you're not going to, because it's an extended task, you don't actually yeah. uh, generate more momentum. So I don't know. Hint, hint, if somebody wanted to buy some, hint, hint, <laughs> proxy. Um, there, It is available for purchase now. But uh, that'll put you down to two, two in your complication pool. Or, I'm sorry, your momentum pool. You yeah. don't have a complication pool. I don't know where that came from. Well, we have a complication rating. <laughs> yep, so. correct. Uh, I'm so, just trying to save your face here. It looks like Sean, uh, Sean is going to buy yeah. uh, a momentum for us. That'll put us at three. Um, so going through the logs, uh, you come across a log from about a week ago, um, where one of, uh, oh, uh, Gina is going to buy a momentum. Everybody say, hi, Gina. Thank you. Hi, Gina. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. we, uh, where, uh, one of the, uh, the science officer, uh, Juan Garcia, uh, he is the chief science officer. Uh, he uh, notes that they came across in the asteroid belt um, kind of a, a bit of debris that they couldn't figure out quite what it was. Uh, they brought it on board and one and scan or scanned it before they brought it on board, caught no life signs, brought it on board um, and did some analysis. And it looks to be Dominion in origin. They beamed it back and left it alone. <laughs> like there's like, nope, this is uh, we're good we're good um it didn't seem it seemed to be parts of bulkheads um like kind of fused together maybe from an attack uh they didn't put too much time and effort into really scanning and getting to understand it once they realized that it was dominion in origin okay um other than that uh you go through um the former first officer um notes a couple of times in her logs that um, she thinks that Rex goes about things in a way that she would never go about them. Uh, but it's clear that she respects him quite a bit. Um, it's clear that 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 uh, she doesn't expect to agree with him. That's her job is to disagree yeah. with him and get and do her job to the best of her ability for the ship. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means disagreeing with him and and voicing it. Um, she does talk about her brother being a little. Um, a little more uh, reactionary to some things. There have been times when there's been discuss been uh, disagreements on the bridge where it's just a, I think we should do this. Oh, no, we're going to do it this way. Are you sure, Captain? And then her brother will be like, well, why don't we just do it the right way then, Captain? Like my sister <laughs> said. And, and it's gotten to the point where um, it doesn't look like the brother necessarily has it out for the Captain, but there's some animosity growing, which yeah. is part of what, what happens with family serving like this on a ship. Um, but other than that, like the captain's logs are all, they're a little less, um, you've read Captain uh, Threx's, uh, his logs. They're a little less um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Man, words are bad tonight. A little, less pro a little less proper. They're okay. a little, little more informal, but that there's nothing wrong with them. It's just yeah. it's it's the style in which he records them, and uh, he follows all the pro protocol perfectly. It just doesn't it doesn't have the the starch that the other that Threxes have. Yeah, um, or like mine had when I was right in a ship. Right, he and so he's fully within where he should be. It just is not quite the same. He's um, only wearing 16 pieces of flair. <laughs> right, right. He could be wearing 18 or more. Um, Can you talk about my flair, please? I don't want to talk about my flair. <laughs> so the, the, the logs themselves look fine. Uh, you don't see anything else. Uh, the ship seems to be running relatively smoothly. The only hiccups are between the captain and the, the security officer. And even then, it doesn't seem to be anything to be concerned about that maybe a week on of surely for one of them might <laughs> not just smooth over. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so that's that's kind of what you spend a, a bit of time doing because uh, there's a lot of logs. Yeah. Eighty people still create a ton of logs. Um, Doctor Haskins, the you are taking a sick bay. It is uh, you know how you have main sick bay and then you have another room and you have like that auxiliary sick bay that's way in the back that has like nothing in it. Yeah, that's the sick bay you're in. That's so like, the size of it. It's like <laughs> like one bio bed, a couple of scanners. Uh, it's actually uh, one bio bed and two other regular beds. Oh, That's wow. it. Like there's no room here. But also, if three of the crew members are down, the ship's down like a significant percentage of of its power anyway. Right. Um, as you walk in, uh, this very proper uh, kind of uh, southern draw man uh, stands up. And says, uh, "Good evening, Doctor Haskins. How may I assist you?" Okay, Matt. Remind me what was this doctor's name again? Doctor Ambrose Addington the Third. So, Doctor Addington. <laughs> yes. All right, Doctor Addington. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I'll hold my hand out to shake his. Uh, he grabs it uh, with appropriate politeness in his handshake. Okay, like so it's both. Have... It's firm, but not squeezing, and it, it he shakes it the appropriate amount of times. Everything about this seems exactly the way it should be. All right, so not to squeeze any a little extra. Right. All right. Uh, I understand that you've already done an, an, an autopsy on the first officer. I hope there's no hard feelings if I perform a secondary autopsy. Oh, no, of course not. You have to uh, look into this um, appropriately so that there are no questions on the captain's innocence. So, um, well, he, no, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. No, you go ahead. As you say, as I start, you know, preparing, you know, pulling out trike orders, all that, I'm just going to nonchalantly ask him about in the report about the two crew members that had seen a non-Federation humanoid on the ship. We have, uh, we have a young crew. Um, I mean, the captain himself is not even 30. Well, uh, his host is, I mean, no, well, but, but, but listen, we have a young and inexperienced crew. Right. They're good. They're they're a good crew, but they're just they get a little jumpy sometimes, and it gets. I know you. I you took my post on the Serenitis. It's different. You have something to do. There are there the the, the dapple dough. You can find people. We, we have two very small messes, and that's it. We don't have the ability to have several people available on the night shift. We have two or three that run the whole right. ship at that time. And that no, it, it becomes very lonely. And I, if I had to guess, and I may be wrong, I, it's just jumpy crew members remembering their time fighting enemies that could be all around. You've, I, you've been giving out reports about the true way. It seems dangerous. And we are on a ship that, may not be able to stand up to, to any kind of assault from them. And at the same time, I'd like to myself and Commander Chevran would like to talk to these two individuals because we've ran into the Cardassians a number of times already out here. Non-confrontational, it's never been a, a you know, come to open fire yet, but they do keep showing up where they're least expected. I do remember your report, though, about the in Sent with the, I believe they were the pirates, correct? Yes. That that's a ship that size. One of them we would be fine against, but if there were more than one, we would have a very dangerous time. Oh, I I don't doubt it. At the same time, are they stable? I know in your report you said you were you've been counseling them for what happened to them in the war. Would I wouldn't I would have no concern. About the stability of them or their their work, the 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 abilities at their work. My my main concern is that it gets lonely at night, and sometimes the mind wanders. And you know, we we'll just ask them a few questions, and we should be able to determine absolutely that for ourselves. Absolutely. Would you like to see the body first? I assume. Yes, please. Uh, he walks over to like uh, the wall where there are clearly cold storage units oh. and taps a couple of buttons and it slides out. Um, the body is still in you know perfectly fine condition. Uh, the the um, the incisions are expertly done, um, like far better than what uh, 
far better than what you can do yourself. Like he is clearly an expert surgeon. Um, and he just says, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, examine the body. The uh, sick bay is yours. And to make sure that I don't uh, cause any um, bias here, I, I will uh, alleviate myself to my office. Okay. And he kind of wanders okay. over back to his office where he was when he first came in and goes back to his reports and seems to leave, leave you be. Well, the, the first thing I want to do for my scan is look for cellular degradation to make sure that the time of death is as of the phaser burn and not. Why don't we have you give me um, just a straight um, reason medicine? And I'd say xenobiology is going to apply. Cool. So I need to roll under a 17. That is a success and a critical. It's a critical success. I rolled a two. So you got three successes? Yep. Okay. Um, so you, what you note is that everything about the phaser fire is correct. Okay. You don't notice anything it being off at all. Um, like the the cells are appropriately singed and burned in the chest. The heart stopped, and it's very clear it was violently stopped, um, almost to the point where it was. Uh, it kind of parts of it like ripped open from the impact of the the phaser blast, which is typical for the kill setting. Um, Everything about it seems right. Uh, your scan, your scans don't pick up anything out of the ordinary. Um, it's but like it's another, a, so not like another mode of death that they were covering up by shooting the body. Correct, correct. As uh, you are kind of finishing up your your thorough look over the body, uh, Rosrin and uh, Minkler come in. Lieutenant, everything okay? We can't hear you, Danny. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so he says, um, yes, Dr. Haskins, we found some unknown DNA at the scene of the crime, and we were hoping that you could analyze it for us. Unknown in what way? Like, are we Never mind. I'll just I'll, I'll take the sample. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, like I don't know in what way. I don't know. Let's ask the doctor. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> As in, I, 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 their scan showed definitely showed it not to to be unique. Yeah. Unknown in what way? Right. right. It is unknown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, can I get another? We'll call it reason science or reason. We'll call it reason science. But again, xenobiology is going to apply. Cool. Uh, and it's a difficulty of three. So before you tell me if you succeeded or not, do you want to buy any dice? Yeah. I'm going to buy one. Okay. That'll put us down to three momentum. <sighs> that was a 20 on one of them. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That feels good. And then, that, and then oh, two yeah. successes. Okay, uh, so I you needed three successes, <laughs> yeah, uh, which you did not get. Um, as you're scanning it, something is wrong with the DNA. Um, Minkler sneezed on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't roll any any uh, complications. Uh, the doctor did. So, <laughs> like as as you're scanning it, the the DNA. Um quits it, it ceases to be there kind of almost like the computer can't read it for a moment and then it comes back and then it phases back out and back in as you're trying to scan it like you can't you can't get a good enough lock on it to really understand what's going on so is and, it oscillating in a pattern or is it just completely random no it's it's um it's almost in the pattern of breathing Lieutenant, this is this is this is different. Um, 
Dr. Ambrose. Oh, hey, uh, let's go ahead and re-roll re -roll that 20. Oh, you want me to re-roll that 20? Yeah, because somebody bought it in the chat. Sweet. That's three successes. Okay. We're going to let you get rid of that complication, but the, the, the last success uh, won't apply yet. Okay. You called over Dr. Ambrose. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do you have anything in sick bay? My tricorder cannot lock onto the sample. It is of unknown origin. It's DNA. Um, it appears to be breathing as I'm trying to scan it. Um, he comes over and uh, like pulls out his own medical tricorder and does mm. the exact same scan. He shakes his head and he like he motions you over to the to uh, like the little lab area they have there. Um, and the two of you start working on scanning it together. Uh, can I get you to give me an insight medicine? Insight Roxy has bought another momentum that'll put us at four. Cool. Okay. So what is my difficulty? Uh, difficulty is one. One. Ooh, that's one success. Fantastic. Uh, he is... He is very at home here in this. This is this is what he does well, is like intricate detail. Um, so the two of you work together for just a couple of minutes. Um, and what you're picking up is that the uh, there the DNA is not in the database whatsoever. However, mm -hmm. what you are seeing in it, of it suggests that the DNA has been augmented and genetically modified multiple times. So would I recognize it as Jim Hadar or Cardassian? It's possible that there's Jim Hadar or Cardassian in there, but it is not one sure. or the other. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes sense. So it's safe to say then it's some augmented DNA at this point. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I would pass that on to the lieutenant and look at him and go, I think it's time to go get a sample, a blood sample from the captain. Okay. Uh, Roxy, I, I'm not sure that you're right, but I don't care. We'll put it at five. <laughs> it doesn't it, like I'm fine with giving. So we're at five in the moment to pull. I think I may have missed one, but it doesn't matter either way. I'm fine with giving you extra momentum. Uh, so you need to go scan the captain. No, actually, I'm, gonna, go... I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a legit blood sample because I'm sure. having sure. visions of changelings. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure. And and that's what Rosrin was thinking in the back of his head. So <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, be, you know what? Before we do that, why don't we go talk to Commander Shavrin before we go and force Yeah, his, let him uh, know what we found yeah. out. Yeah, that'd be a good idea before we start doing blood tests on everybody. Uh, so the three of you kind of walk in on the commander as he's finishing up one, some of the last logs um, and just kind of hanging out there uh, in the in the ready room. It's a much smaller ready room than what you're used to, but it is still spacious enough for the four of you. Mm. Uh, Have you found anything? Commander, we found some... Um unidentifiable unknown DNA at the crime scene. And we brought it, to, I brought it to Dr. Haskins to look at. All right. Um, I'm going to pick up, I'm assuming I have like four different pads laying on the table <laughs> with various files open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because tabs aren't a thing in the future. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'll pick one up and I'll sort of motion for uh, Dr. Haskins to stand by me to look at this. It appears on one of their last missions they had brought some uh, flotsam on board to scan, and there were some unknown elements on it. Like what we experienced? I, I'm sort of showing him what the readout on the pad says. Oh, okay. Because we, yeah. we, we, well, when Shirin starts... To Keita automatically goes to the flotsam that we picked up and the absolute mm. horror that we went through on the ship with everybody going crazy. And then I see Dominion and I'm like, oh no. And uh, if there was some kind of uh, changeling on the ship, that would explain the things that the two crew members saw late at night. It, 
very well could be. Um, we would have, well, I don't know if we would have access to it. We would probably would have access to what a scan of a changeling would look like, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, uh, that sample didn't This does not all. match no, that no. at all. No. Let's say if nothing else, we can tag DS9 to send us Odo's scans from his tenure. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. They, they, the, yeah. Starfleet Medical has plenty of them. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, what I thought. Not, not to spoil uh, Rob, who hasn't gotten that far, <laughs> as to why they have plenty of them. Uh, uh, Commander, this is... The sample is... It's augmented. I mean, it looks partially Jem'Hadar. It looks partially Kardashian. It looks partially unknown. I I don't know what it is, but I think we need to start with the captain and get a blood sample to confirm that he is not a changeling and then scan the blood to make sure that nothing of this augmented sample is in him. All right. Um, yes, that sounds good. I am also going to take the information from the scan from the DNA found and run it versus the scans from the flotsam that they had brought aboard. In the meantime, I can start um, conducting interviews with anyone who might have heard anything and checking out some of the, um, any audio or video that might have been available. I can uh, even so try to look f at the video from when those crew members were on duty and see if we can <laughs> capture this thing that they might have seen. And Dr. Dr. I Soros did get his all clear that we can interview, that they're not, you know, that, that we won't traumatize them by asking them yeah. any questions. But it's his opinion that it was daydreaming on a lonely third shift. Yeah. Which makes He's... me want to look into it even more. Yeah. I yeah. don't trust people who are dismissive. Honestly. I can yeah. I can <laughs> um interview those as the computer's running the I'm assuming we can set up the computer to sort of run an automatic scan because science is not my strong suit. Uh, an automatic scan of what specifically? Um, to go through the various chemical agents found on the flotsam that they brought aboard. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually already been a uh, a full spectrometer done oh, yeah. on it, um, oh, and but, uh, nothing is really matching. Okay. Could this? So, yeah. Could this be the the true? It was the true way, right? Mm -hmm. Could this be Agents of the True Way trying to sow disorder in the Gamma uh, Quadrant? Dr. Haskins, when you interview the captain, I would like you to take Minkler with you as uh, just a measure in case. Um, yeah. As in protection. case things turn violent. I think I can handle one young trill. But can you handle a changeling or a Jim Hadar yeah. or good point? Some amalgamation the the Dominion mm -hmm. has come up with. Good point. A change Hadar. A change Hadar. A change Hadar. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's scary. <laughs> or a Jim Dacian, maybe. Ooh, Jim Dacian. That's even scarier. <laughs> All right, Commander. Yes. If nothing else, you need a, a meat shield to throw in the way while you get help. <laughs> Excuse me, that is one of my security officers. Oh, no, fully out of character. Yeah. <laughs> Just a blade of meat shields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Keed is headed to talk with the captain. Uh, what are Rosrin and Chavin, Chavrin doing? Um, I believe we are both doing interviews with different crew members. I'm specifically going to speak to the two that were having, uh, that saw something. And then Rosrin, yeah. you're going to go over the any security footage or any footage yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to start with the security footage. Any audio, any video okay. uh, that might have been captured, not only uh, around the scene of the crime, but also in like around where the scene of the crime was, like hallways and stuff like that. Sure. And, and then also you're also going to check the 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 nights when there were vision, uh, there were sightings. Yes. Fantastic. Let's uh let's start with you. Um we'll go with uh security reason and then we'll let shipboard tactical systems apply because you are really working into the security end of stuff, and I think that does kind of apply here. Security reason 13. And so that means I can do a critical if I need to. Or on four or under, yep. 
Yep. Uh, so difficulty is going to be uh, three. All right. Uh, how much momentum do we have? Five, five right now. I'd like to use one if I can. For yeah, another go for five. it. Oh, oh, okay. So <laughs> there's a one. So that's nice. a critical. Um, there's a 15, which doesn't hit, and a 19. I don't think that gets up into the com into the uh, no, nope, not yet. So, so, no. all right. So I did get a critical. Um, okay, that's so it. that's that's Sorry. one, right? Two or two, two successes. Um, so you go through the the security footage and scans of the ship, and, and you don't notice anything out of the ordinary, which all by itself is strange. Uh, there should be something here. If there is a, a, a I, well, we'll call them a third party. I don't know, like an 81st party <laughs> or whatever. If there were something else on the ship, it should show up. And you yeah. don't see any, no, like even you even run a scan, just a security, like a, uh, a level four security sweep, which is pretty intense. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Everything mm. that should be there is there. And nothing else is there that shouldn't be there. I'll just let you all in on Rosrin's thought right now that this is all too neat for him. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's neat all things. too neat for him. It's all too, yes, this works out this way, and we don't find anything out of the ordinary, and everything's just as it should be. Like, stuff like this is messy, so it's really tripping Rosrin's, you know, his spots are itching. <laughs> you know, like, this is not so. Yeah, I, I think I need a second to think about how he's going to handle that. So. Uh, so Marzon, you've been kind of hanging out in your room, reading a little. Are you reading an actual book or are you reading a data pad? Probably reading over some of the scans and sure. just keeping up on work. Like you know, this is going to uh, go away at some point. It'll be over and still have a job to do. Can I so get I'm... you to give me an insight security roll? Okay. <clears throat> I just want to make sure all of his stuff is in read only, right? He can't actually... Right. No, no, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, He's... just making sure. Uh, I'm sorry, that was a difficulty of two. And it, how many do I roll? You'll roll two dice. Unless you want to buy some, we do have five momentum. So you could buy two dice with us with uh, a total of three momentum if you wanted to. And do any of my focuses apply? Um, we'll call Are composure. Yeah, composure. Okay. And you said that was insight and security. Yeah. So you'll crit on twos with the composure focus. Okay. And I'll spend a momentum. Okay, that'll put you at three dice. It was down to four momentum. I rolled a one, a three, and a 17. So that is uh, three successes. Fantastic. Uh, your spots itch. Something is off. <laughs> and as you're kind of turning around, like all of all of the rooms have access to the Jeff Jeffrey tubes. Like that's how ships are built now. And it, you swear for just half a second that you see the panel over the Jeffrey's tube just inch closed, just the smallest little bit of movement into the wall. And it is silent, but something about it just like that leaves you on edge. And that's when uh, the door opens and uh, Dr. Haskins and, uh, a security officer from the Serenitis walk in. We'll I say that you know Minkler. You've you've talked to Minkler. I've Minkler on site. You, yeah, you know Minkler, and boy, are you just so happy to see him. Minkler. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the two of them walk in. Um, can I, uh, had uh, Doctor Haskins? Can I get you to give me? Insight and uh, medicine. I'd say your nah, no, nothing really applies here. Okay, that's an eight and a five, so it's two successes. So, uh, it's clear that 
something has caught Rex a little off. Which has me now on edge because I'm already suspecting that there's something up with the good captain. Captain, um, there's been a, a uh, curiosity found in the investigation. And with your permission, I'd like to take a blood sample. No, of course. Uh, Marzon, you notice that Minkler's hand goes to his phaser, not to pull it, but just to like, in that way that cowboys kind of put their hands on their guns, like they're ready. He does the cop rest hand on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I assume you don't stop the doctor. No. Good. Uh, so you uh, he he puts the uh, hypo the hypo on you, pulls out some some blood. Does it? You I assume you do a full scan on him. Or as well, best you can with the tricorder. Well, do the little shake to make sure it's not changeling first. Nope, no, no changeling blood. Okay, yeah, and then I'm going to scan out the tricorder to see if I pick up any of that augmented DNA. Sure, let's give a reason and uh, medicine, or yeah, reason medicine. Okay. And again, xenobiology is going to apply here. Okay. God, I'm going to throw this damn dice away. <laughs> 20 and a 3. I'm sorry? I got a 20 and a 3. You got a 20? Yes. Dang. Wow. That's fantastic. So and here's three, what you get. The, the before get before we spend any any uh, channel points to reroll, don't do that because I this is I want I want this is going to be good for story. Yes, I agree. Uh, so as you are scanning him, everything seems to be good until you scan the symbiote, and what you pick up is that the symbiote is on edge, and symbiotes don't have emotional reactions. Right. This is a survival reaction. Ooh. This, the, as far as you can tell from like your understanding of how symbiotes work, mm -hmm. it is reacting to a predator. Ah. Uh -huh. And I noticed that Captain, are you feeling all right? Um well, I'm locked up on my own ship being tried for murder, and I'm pretty sure something's crawling around inside my ship because your symbiote is reacting like there's a predator nearby. Is that because of myself and Minkler, or? No. If you could ask Chevren to do a scan of the Jeffrey's tubes, I'd appreciate it. And I'll tap my communicator. Commander Chevren? Yes? The captain seems to think he saw something moving around in the Jeffrey tube hatch in his quarters and is requesting a scan of the Jeffrey's tubes. Um, I would suggest using the DNA that we scanned earlier as something to go on when we're doing the scan. Uh, all right. I can... so, so something to the level that would, that would scan for that DNA is going to take some time. Mm -hmm. So it's not undoable. It's just going to take time. Mm -hmm. So I would say Chevron probably orders a quick scan real fast first, and then yeah. a another scan after that. Um, we're going to have, um, I'm just going to roll for the NPC doing the scan because there's yeah. no reason. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, the NPC does really well. <laughs> he gets three successes. He gets um, three twenties. He only had one die. It's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, the first scan comes by with back without a problem. It's going to take 20, 25 minutes uh, to come back on the on the the more in depth scan. But uh, good, the good news is the ship is small, because otherwise it could take hours. Um, so meanwhile the the blood the blood seems fine. Everything else coming back on your tricorder is fine. Rex is reading with a little bit higher uh, like stress indicators but also like literally being held for potential murder and they're really not even that high it's just they're just outside of norm um but everything seems fine well the good news captain is the dna that we discovered near the weapons locker doesn't seem to be contaminating you or your symbiote so i I think that is some pretty substantial evidence to to start moving towards to clear your name. Okay. But unfortunately, we're going to have to ask you to remain here unless you feel 
unsafe with the with whatever you think is in the Jeffrey tubes, we could probably relocate you to a little more secure area. I don't believe there's any part of the ship that could be accessed by Jeffrey's tube. The brig could not. The brig is specifically built for that, but that is the only other place. Other than the only place I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to, we can station a security officer inside. And, you know. If not, yeah, Mikuler, be... come on. In. <laughs> <laughs> Make Mikuler just kind of, I'll, I'll be out here. <laughs> yeah, if if you see the if you see that something coming through the hatch, definitely holler. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Rosman wants to like hit his communicator, and he's gonna say to Commander Shivrin and Doctor Haskins, and you know probably uh, Captain Rex can hear it too, probably, and he's. He's going to be pondering. He has a very thoughtful tone, and he says, considering that evidence that we found, is there any way to calibrate the ship's scanners to scan specifically for this DNA to find if there's any more of it? I know we've been doing some general scans and general looking around, but is there some way we could specifically look for this DNA and see if it's any other in any other place. Uh, do you believe that we requested the scan to be done at the Jeffrey tubes? I mean, if are you suggesting that we need to expand it for the whole ship? I would suggest so. I mean, the Jeffrey tubes are one thing, and plus, if are you specifically looking for the DNA with the in the scans of the Jeffrey tubes, or are you just looking for any anomalies, Commander? Um, I believe that we have included the DNA in the spectrum results. Okay. So we will get normal energy fluctuations, phase emissions, and this DNA. Mm -hmm. okay. Along with tracheocardiogram or whatever um, technobabble nonsense pops up with it. <laughs> yes, then I would suggest perhaps after the Jeffrey tubes, we expand that same search and that same scan to the rest of the ship. We should if also it is some kind of sentient being, it could be hiding somewhere. We should also check the weapons locker itself to make, a, did you scan like inside the locker? In and it, around was in it? The, it, it was in the wall near the weapons okay. locker. Um, we can go back and do some more intense scans on that area. Mm -hmm. hmm. Matt, you're muted. Sorry, I was coughing and I just didn't unmute myself. That would have been helpful. Um, <clears throat> Commander, you have uh, tracked down the two crewmen that made uh, the reports of seeing things. Uh, they both were kind of dead asleep when when you went to get them. Uh, let's uh, we'll start with uh, I don't know. It's another another Andorian. Uh, yeah. We'll start with them. What what kind of questions do you have? Um, I'm just would like them to go over the events of the night that they saw. Uh, probably the day. Go over the events then the day of, and then the day after. Okay, so why don't you give me, um, let's say, Insight Command. Insight Command? Mm-hmm. And is this a social role? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Um, then I get to use cold reading if I'm successful. Fantastic, yeah. Um, what uh, is the difficulty? Oh, yeah, good call. Uh, it's going to be a two. Two? Yeah. All right. That would succeed with a nine okay. and a 13. Fantastic. Uh, so he recounts that the, the day woke up, you know, middle of, of the B shift, um, went to the mess, got some breakfast, uh, did a little bit of workout in the, uh, like the tiny little fitness room they've got. Um, and then, uh, reported for duty. Uh, he was on uh, engineering duty that night, uh, you know, just keeping an eye on the warp core, checking levels. He went through everything he's supposed to, but it is important to note that he is not an officer. He is a crew member. He's just, un uh, he's an enlisted uh, guy, not an officer. And uh, 
kind of he goes through everything. Uh, it's very clear that he is a technician, uh, a, an engineering technician, and th that he knows the ship, the ship's engines pretty well. Uh, but he turned the corner to go to the mess to get a better cup of coffee because he's of the opinion that that the mess's coffee out of the replicator is better, which whatever. <laughs> um, uh, and as he was turning down a, uh, the hallway to go there at the very end of the other hallway, which is not very far away, but far enough, could have sworn he saw like the leg of something in almost like a gray jumpsuit. Like a kind of a skin tight gray jump scrum, jumpsuit, mm -hmm. pass down the corridor. Uh, he hustled over to go see if he could see what what it was, and there was nothing there. All right. Um, he comes off as relatively uh, sure of himself, but just that he is um, he is young, and he does seem a little jittery when he talks about the quiet at night. Okay. And with cold reading, I get a bonus momentum that I can only use for the additional information. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions that uh, I might have missed? Um, I may, like, rem not, not questioning, but, like, reminisce with him about the war because we were sure. both combatants and... The doctor thinks that it might be some PTSD related things. So uh, I just kind of want to get a feel for that. You get the idea that uh, he's an engineer, so he believes that his honor is earned by keeping the ship running so it can keep fighting. Mm -hmm. um, he was on, uh, <clears throat> he was a crew member on a Constellation class, not the biggest or hard, you know, strongest ship, mm -hmm. but tough. They were Constellation ships can take some hits. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was very proud to work on that ship. Um, he was on B shift at that time when there weren't emergencies, which was pretty often. Um, but he, he has a great deal of pride in what happened. There were a couple of boarding actions that happened, and he did see a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, but uh, like a good Andorian, he didn't shy away from it, and he feels pretty comfortable with what happened. Yeah. But his opinion is Jim Hadar are terrifying. Mm -hmm. Even even knowing that, like <laughs> they they don't sleep, they don't they are they are murder machines, and that is their only job, and they are good at it. Yeah. Does that, so does that give you the read you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good. 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 Um. So uh, the other he's the also other... my Ambo Jitsu sparring partner. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I I I 100 percent make that canon now. Um. <laughs> The other uh, officer is a human, a uh, human woman. I'm sorry, the other crew member is a human woman. Uh, she was on the bridge uh, with one of the junior officers as commander. Uh, so the way they split up the bridge at night is <laughs> one person sits at uh, ops and handles um, any uh, navigation or piloting or tactical issues and whoever's commanding the bridge handles everything else, <laughs> which is the, like, it's a lot for two people to do, but also usually at night, it's either they're at warp or they're sitting somewhere doing nothing. So yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the junior officer sent her to go grab uh, like some snacks that had been like cooked by one of the other officers and left in the mess, um, which is, not terribly unheard of, but like one of the things about the replicator technology is that the real food is so much better in flavor. The replicator food is just kind of bland all across. So these were these were like sugary, sweet um, treats that that the that she went to go get came out of the bridge, turned to go down there, could have sworn she saw someone disappear. Same thing, uh, kind of skin tight gray jumpsuit disappear into the the uh, mess ran up to it and when she got there there was nobody in there all right and, and the the distance between the mess and the bridge door is like eight good strides all right uh, should I roll to get a read on her as well yeah or... go for it go for it same thing uh insight and uh command. Cold reading it can apply. It can apply, sure, for sure. 
All right, uh, six and an eight. So that's two successes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, Dustbuster, that is a, that is, you are the only one that thought to transport snacks to the bridge on Nightwatch. But probably not a bad idea when you have something crawling around on the ship you can't find. Uh, she seems, um, she seems pretty sure of herself. This is, this is kind of old work for her. She's probably in her mid to late thirties, still a crew member. Seems a, probably a perfectly fine pilot and or tactical officer if needed. But, um, she doesn't seem, she doesn't seem that, that terrified of anything, she did see combat during the Cardassian War, though, even before the the Dominion War, and uh, was left pretty affected by both of them. Uh, she saw hand to hand combat in both. Uh, her ship was uh, disabled in the Cardassian War, and there were a lot of concerns about whether or not they would survive. So she has some strong feelings about both Cardassians and Jim Hadar. Right. So, any other questions from Shabrid? Uh, no, I'm just going to take notes to share with the rest of the crew. Um, okay. So, uh, you, uh, Shabrid, and actually everyone, including the captain, gets a hail or gets a, gets a chirp from uh, the bridge. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Commander Glovjog. Uh, are, is is everyone on the ship here that was on the runabout with you? Yes. Uh, we are getting something just transported from our ship to the runabout. If That's what we get for leaving the keys in the ignition. Minkler! Minkler <laughs> left the keys! No! Damn it, Minkler! Damn it! He didn't put the club in. <laughs> yeah, the, the, right. the Federation club just... <laughs> uh, if, if no one is going to object as a player, Ros, I mean, this will yeah. trip Rosrin's, like, security thing, and he's like, can you transport me over there? Yeah, th me? Three to beam to the runabout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, that's actually a great place for us to take a break. Uh, we're going to be back in 10 minutes. Uh, stretch your legs, hit the restroom, get some water because Cthulhu demands it. And, uh, you know, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys then.
Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Voyages Of. I'm Matt, and I'm here with a fantastic cast. Uh, before we get back into the story real quick, uh, we've got some uh, shows that are coming up. Uh, we've got a bunch of launchings this uh, January, but uh, on Saturday, we have a Seriously Let's Play. Those are our one-shots. Uh, that's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Uh, or 11 a.m. Pacific, and that's for Mistborn. Uh, so you should definitely come out for that. The, the Seriously Let's Play are really fun. Uh, we have a lot of fun with those, so definitely check those out. Uh, starting on Sunday, the 9th, uh, Illuminated Page Horror on the Orient Express premieres. This will be season four of Illuminated Page. This will be the first season that Roxanne, uh, who plays uh, Victra, um, she'll be running the whole thing, uh, the whole kit and caboodle, and she's uh, she's got a, some some great story to go on. Or Horror on the Orient Express is going to be great. Uh, I'm playing on that, and so is uh, Sean, who plays Keed. Uh, we'll, we'll be uh, d d bringing together some shenanigans, stealing spoons, mm -hmm. and telling really boring stories about how we don't understand money because we're rich people. I'm rich people. <laughs> um, explaining the concept of banana. Explaining the concept of a diner to a countess was just so yeah, yeah. So what's a? I don't understand this diner thing. Uh, then uh, we will be back next week uh, with the voyages of on Monday, same bat time, same, same star time, same star channel. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, next Thursday, the thirteenth is the premiere of season three of Growing Shadows. It's our Ninja Crusade second edition game. Uh, John, who's uh, hovering in the background like uh, like the the emergency medical hologram, uh, he's uh, he's going to run that, and Roxy's on that one. It's been running for a couple of seasons, and uh, we had a big like season two finale where uh, we brought some some old players together from the old podcast for Ninja Crusade with the uh, the uh, streamers. It's fantastic. Oh, um, and then Saturday the fifteenth, we have another series. Let's play. This is Kids on Bike. Uh, this was the holiday uh, game that got postponed last month uh, due to uh, you know personal stuff that that came up that that uh, couldn't be avoided. Uh, but the first one was great. You can go back and watch that on our YouTube channel uh, and look for the Halloween uh, Kids on Bikes game. And this will be a follow up to that. Um, John will be running that and that should be a fantastic cast. I think, uh, Sean, you're on that one, too, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you should definitely come out for that. Uh, the series Let's Play, Let's Play games are always a lot of fun. Um, it gives everybody a chance to, like, shake themselves into a new role. Um, and then, of course, you know, I think the Voyages of is great. I know that Illuminated Page and Growing Shadows are going to be fantastic, so don't miss out on those. Uh, not that I need to remind you, but don't forget, you do have uh, the ability to uh, spend channel points on Momentum Threat and rerolls. Uh, you can still tip to create an NPC. We wouldn't have Minkler with, without uh, somebody <laughs> tipping, I'm just saying. Uh, I promise that your NPC will be better equipped to handle life than Minkler. I guarantee it. <laughs> Uh, don't forget that you can follow and subscribe. Uh, you generate faster channel points when you do that. Um, you can also subscribe for free if you're an Amazon Prime member. Uh, so make sure that the, the whatever you pay for that every month goes a little bit farther. Uh, you can use that through Twitch to subscribe. Uh, it's, it's the same thing as subscribing normally. It's just not a recurring thing. You have to remember to do it every month. And it's a little silly, but, uh, you know, it's free. So what are you going to do? Um, but uh, that's that's the games we got coming up. Uh, that's the stuff Don't that's going on. Seven uh, C on the eighteenth. Yes, I, I left out the seven C because it's past the halfway point in the month and it wasn't on my list. But yes, the seventeenth on seven C mm -hmm. on the eighteenth is coming up. Uh, Danny is running that, and uh, I think John and Roxy are on that. And I don't remember who your other two crew members are. I apologize. Uh, Ala Zilla and Michael. I have. Fair. Fantastic. And Ala is on uh, Illuminated Page with us. So uh, we're going to get a lot of great stuff uh, coming up from uh, Rook and Rasp. Yeah. I'm, listen, we got great stuff coming up. So, um, yeah. So here we are. You know, we're going to get back into it. Uh, thank you, Sean, for uh, gifting a, a sub. No, we really welcome. appreciate that. And uh, Miranda Pandemonium will, will appreciate that. <laughs> um cool so uh you guys are beaming over all f all three of you 
L uh, leave Minkler, because, like, it, it's okay. <laughs> He can, he can stay over there. We'll tell him he can watch stuff over there. Okay. But we need someone here to guard in case the captain... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> ...starts going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so you, uh, the four, the three of you beam over. Um, I need all four of you to give me fitness security rolls. Oh, no. Oh, you know what? I should roll for the transporter tech yeah he didn't botch that god <laughs> oh no well no, i mean if he would have botched it it could have just like put you guys like on the ground instead of standing in in ready uh which one of you has uh phasers just curious is it just the security chief um uh, i needed a phaser going over to <laughs> yeah i don't think i would have brought a phaser with me however i am klingon and i have a knife <laughs> yeah I have my Ushan tour. Fantastic. So uh can't shoot stuff, but you cut it. And I got my cane so I can harry them. Uh, so th to answer you, John, no, phasers are not standard issue for out people outside of uh, security. Everyone else has to get them. And uh, you actually see that quite often in like even the next generation where like they get ready to, to beam and they all pull out phasers from the little locker next to the teleport or the transporter and set them to stun or whatever. Uh, so I'm sorry. The difficulty was one. Did anyone get less than one on this on this fitness uh security? Oh no! I got zero. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Did you roll any complications? No, I rolled a fourteen and a twelve. Cool. Uh, I did get two successes okay, for fantastic. momentum purposes. So we will, yeah. Uh, uh, Rosrin, did you get any more than one? Uh, no, I just got one. Fantastic. Yeah. So that'll put us at five in the momentum pool. Um, and, uh, so the, the three of you, um, the three of you beam over and as you're, uh, rematerializing on the, the runabout, there is, uh, a discharge from the runabout's transporter. Uh, it hits all three of you, uh, Rosrin and Chevrin, you're kind of just buffeted it like pushes you around uh the doctor you take a hit kind of uh straight in the chest Ooh. and you're gonna take uh four points of stress okay. uh as the transporter was clearly booby trapped no oh, we're gonna buy momentum thanks roxy that'll put us at six that'll cap us cool. <sighs> okay great the medical <laughs> officer needs medical help <laughs> Um, immediately looking around in protective mode with phaser, like, is there anybody here? You um, know? can I get you to give me a insight? We'll call it insight security. Um, mm -hmm. can I aid in that? Uh, yes. Uh, we're going to call it a difficulty of four and I'll explain why here in a second. And I'm actually spending two threat to make this a little more difficult. So we'll get there. Oh, okay. Uh, Threat has no cap. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. And I can only use like one of my values once, right? Uh, you you have one point of determination. Unless something happens that gives you another point of determination, you you won't have it to spend. Oh. And that's kind of where that comes from. Hey, thanks, Roxy, for buying threat. <laughs> oh, man, all right. Let me just check my talent. Just let me just let me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, what, well, what, while what? while you're checking those, let, let you, me give you a couple of a couple of uh, notes about the the situation. As the this discharge goes off, it's almost as though the runabout has started to fill with uh, smoke, and it's not caustic. It's not causing you to cough or anything. It is making it incredibly difficult to see. Uh, thank you, Roxy, for donating a sub to Tree Silver. Uh, I don't even think Tree Silver is online, but I'm sure they'll appreciate it later. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, your I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what your your stuff does. I can look at it real quick if you want. Um, oh, no, I've got it. I've got it all okay. up. Yeah, and for, I, I, I set them aside on a Word doc so I could quickly mm -hmm. look at all my gotcha. stuff. So I, none of it's going to help me. Okay. Oh, good, though. Oh, good. Um that gives me uh, 11 and 4, so that's two successes for me. 
Okay. And then you're assisting uh, Shabrid? Uh, yes. I'm trying to see if anything, could, any of my focuses could help out with this. Um, uh, you actually have, don't you have sensory replacement? I do, but that only helps me if, um, if I succeed. Okay, we'll call it um, command tactics, is fine. Yeah. Oh, I was looking for, um, focuses. Yeah, command tactics is Oh, command, focus. yes, yes. Then I got two successes. So there's the four you guys needed. Great. Sweet. Um. So yeah, Shivrin's eye starts glowing red in the darkness. What does your sensory replacement do on a success then? Um, what it does is it allows me uh, when the I have the artificial sense trait, which can be used normally, so I wouldn't be at disadvantage in this situation. Okay. I also, when I uh, use the obtain information momentum spend, I can ask questions um, that people with just organic senses might not be able to see. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, so uh, between the two of you, uh, you don't see anything... Uh, I would say Keed is not knocked down, but is definitely hurt. Um, like down on one knee, smoke coming off his chest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're just kind of, you don't see anything immediately, but the runabout has some spaces, some space into it. There's there's an area in the back, like, we can go through the whole rundown if you guys are ready. I don't know if you want to do anything else before we do that. Uh, I'll definitely check on Keed and give him a hand up. Yeah, and Roswin would start doing a, you know, kind of like a SWAT inspection of the of the runabout, you know, checking corners. Sure, you know, sure. You know, Commander, pulls, Commander pulls Keed up. There's just a growl. I'm like, yeah. Duh. Uh, uh, is go ahead, um, Doc. Um, I forget Keed's last name now. Haskins. Haskins. Haskins I must say, uh, Doctor. Is, is Dr. Haskins, I know he's a medical officer, but does he have any science skills? Uh, some, not a lot. Okay. Um, you might have the most out of all of us. Uh, we are not a science heavy people. No, I spent most of my time in, in Star, in Starfleet yeah. Academy studying medicine. Uh, I, but I took some, I took, I took <laughs> some, uh, electives. <laughs> I, um, Chevrin is going to ask Dr. Haskins to get on the uh, computer and see if he can do some scans to see if there's anything in the area. Uh, oh, space? Not um, in the ship. On the ship. Like, no, on the ship. Like scans yeah. of the ship. While me and uh, Lieutenant Erex do a physical search. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. For sure. Um, so let's have Haskins, uh, let's have you do a reason security. Okay. Ooh, good night. Uh, what was the difficulty? Uh, we'll call it a two. Okay. Uh, I got one. Okay. Uh, so you start venting some of the smoke. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit longer. Not a big deal. Um, and then uh, Commander Chevrin and Rosrin, you both kind of split around the transporter. Transporter kind of sits in the middle, and you head back towards the crew quarters. Uh, you sweep the area. It, it is starting to to the smoke is starting to go away, but you don't see anything. And you even like look around at things and use what you would expect. Look at things you would expect like a changeling to turn into or hide as it's a big thing that has been a uh, part of the training. Um, and uh, we'll kind of, you know, like you kind of go through the whole area and you don't really see anything. Hmm. Um, can we check like the um entrance hatches to the Jeffrey's tubes? To uh, see there if are been... no Jeffrey's tubes on the, the runabout. It's just not big enough. Okay. Basically, you just rip panels off and repair stuff there. Okay. But like maybe check ventilation system, like air ducts. 
Yeah, so it looks like uh, whatever happened, someone replicated uh, the, the smoke into the room. And it was made in such a way to be obscuring but not harmful. Hmm. So that when someone transported in, the transporter would malfunction cause that ex- the 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 discharge and immediately cause the room to fill with smoke. All right, I'll tap the com badge and get a hold and um it doesn't call work. It for doesn't work. Nope. Ooh. All right. Um before we go back, we'll check the weapons locker. Uh, just the weapons out locker of... has not even been opened. Uh when you check all the weapons are there. All right. Um well, I'll take out two phasers. Sure. One for me and one for Dr. Haskins. Okay. I feel better now. While, and then... the, while the three of you try and figure out the transporter because it's not working, <laughs> we're going to pop back over to Rex. Mm-hmm. Rex, you're standing there with Minkler. Kind of just, uh, you know, this is, it, it's it's clearly not you anymore. But you're also, like, Minkler has not been given a stand down. So he's kind of waiting. Um when behind Minkler, a humanoid just appears, stands probably six foot two. Um, it's gray in appearance and has almost uh, it has skin similar to Jim Hadar, but not as rocky with protuberances like uh, like a dinosaur kind of thing. This is more of like smooth, almost like a reptile, like a snake, but he doesn't have that kind of motion to him. Uh, it, and he is pretty solid. And he just wax Minkler real hard upside the head with a pretty thick looking arm and Minkler just drops (laughs) from now on Minkler stays on ship I think (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, so uh Marzon, uh, this is technically combat, so uh, you as the player get to go first, unless I choose to go first, and I've already taken my action. I knocked Minkler out, so <laughs> what would you like to do? I will launch myself at the person. Fantastic. Go for a tackle. All right, so give me uh, a fitness security. Okay. And I'm also going to roll a fitness security. You need one success at least, and then it's whoever gets more successes. Okay. Um. And he is actually going to, uh, that's so dumb. Uh, <laughs> none of that, none of that applies. I forgot the value I gave him. It's, it's, I'll tell you about it later. Is it uh, screw Minkler? <laughs> no. <laughs> screw Minkler. <laughs> uh, before I, I tell you, talent and focus. <laughs> before I tell you what I got, do you want to spend momentum? I'm not going to spend threat because that's <laughs> fine. But before I tell you the number of successes I have. Do you want I, to spend uh, momentum? I will spend a momentum. Okay, so that'll put you at three dice. And uh, I would like to know if uh, any of my uh, talents come into play here. Um, if not, I would use join to get a focus that is combat related. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you use join to go with uh, hand-to-hand combat. That's fine. One of your one of your people, you know, that is previously in hand-to-hand combat. That's good. We should note that. Uh, go ahead and, uh, yeah. Your focus, so anything under your security will be a will be a crit, or your security are under. Okay. I rolled a five, a seven, and a two. So Ooh, that's that's four nice. successes, which is good because nice. I only had two. You launch yourself at this uh, this humanoid uh, and hit him pretty square back into the wall, um, and you kind of have him not under control but kind of pinned ish uh and it is his turn um and he is going to attempt to break away from you um oh he does no that's that's for piloting never mind um he's gonna try and break away from you and uh spend a determination to activate a value called uh Dodge, duck, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really you proud dodge of that. Dodge a wrench. You can dodge a trill. Launching yeah. Uh, so he is going to attempt to get away from you, and I'm actually going to spend three threat to give him two more dice. Ooh. 
do you want to spend any momentum to stop him? Um, we are capped we out, have? I believe. How, how many? Well, that's a have? no. You have you have five. Okay. Okay. Then yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four. Okay. Uh, so how many do you want to spend? Um, uh, what am I rolling? Uh, it'll be fitness and security. Again, okay. Um, yeah, I'll spend. Uh, I'll spend two. Okay. Uh, you. It's one for one, and then the second one is going to cost two, so it'll be it'll be a total of three. Oh, okay. So we're spending three momentum to get four dice. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, a total of four. Yep. Okay. As long as everyone's okay with that. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. A three, a two, a fourteen, and a nineteen. The 14 and 19 are not successes, are they? I'm having to beat my score. No, they are not. Yeah. You have to go under. The 14 and 19 are not, but the other... So you have three successes, uh, which uh, the the humanoid has four. Uh, so as you kind of pin him against the wall, uh, his body kind of uh, disjoints itself. Um, and slips out from your, your grasp and then runs towards the door. Uh, chat bought momentum. Uh, we are top of the round again. Uh, you would normally go first. I'm going to spend two threat to go first before you, though. Um, as he is going to... Well, there you go. You're just going to keep buying. Chat's bought another momentum. That'll put us at a total of four. Um... <laughs> He's going to attempt to flee the scene and exit. Sean has bought a momentum, so we're at five. <laughs> and there is a security officer outside the door, correct? There is. Or was. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, Minkler was so useful, so. Right, 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 right. It counts. <laughs> Does Minkler still have a, his phaser on his hip? His uh, mink minkler sprinkler. Yes, yes <laughs> the minkler sprinkler. He does have his uh, his phaser. It is not a minkler sprinkler that is still under uh, observation in engineering on the Saranites. Mm. Yeah, because uh, that's not regulation. So uh, <laughs> out out the door he goes. Are you? What would you like to do? Uh, am I close enough to grab the phaser from Minkler? Yeah, you can absolutely grab the phaser, and you can probably position yourself at the door. Um, and get uh, a shot off, you would be, um, uh, it would make it a little bit harder because the, of the doorway um, and the angle. So you'd be looking at a difficulty of three to fire the phaser instead of okay. just a two. All right. I'll go for it. Mm. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and uh, it'll be fitness and security again. Okay. Uh, this time you do not have a focus because it's phasers. Okay. Um, and then real quick, it's automatically set to stun. Do you want to change that? That is a thing that you have the option to do. No. I I'm going to say that increases threat range, doesn't it? Uh, it does. It, it it doesn't. Yes, but no. It, it does a different thing, but it is it is not necessarily great. It's not oh. the best option. No, I meant it, it gives you threat when we do that. Uh, Attack lethally. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to fire on him then? Yep, and I'll spend him a minimum. Okay, so that'll put you at three dice total. Four, nine, and eleven. So that eleven actually hits. Four, nine, and eleven. So that's three successes. That's exactly what you needed. Um, so you should be rolling. Oh, you didn't fill that part in. You silly Billy. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to find where. So you should be adding. What's your security? Two. So you should be rolling five uh, d sixes to see how much damage you're gonna do. Marzon's like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to clear my own name. <laughs> <laughs> and just adding these up. Uh, no, no, no. Just uh, one is one, two is two, three and four are nothing, and five and six are also considered one. Okay, I, I really didn't catch exactly what you said. I'll just tell you what dice I have. Sure, go for it. 
I've got a one, a two, a two, a two, and a one. One, a two, a two. Three a twos two. and two ones. So eight damage. Yeah. <laughs> Minus the okay. Uh, well, that's that's actually real good. Uh, you hit him, uh, kind of in the the like back of the thigh, um, and he stumbles to the ground as he's running. The security officer at the door has his phaser out, but seems very confused because now you have a phaser. <laughs> so we're going to go to the next round of combat. You can fire again. The, 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 the humanoid is down, but not out. But if you fire, it's very possible you'll get fired on by the other officer, by the security officer. So uh, you would go first. What would you like to do? I'll shout, get him. Uh, go ahead and roll. That's going to be a presence and command. Okay. Um, I'd say inspiration is a good focus for that <laughs> or diplomacy. Either way you are commanding him. I'm good with either one of those. It's not a big deal. Uh, difficulty is going to be two. Okay. Uh, I've got that. I got an 11 and a three. That's both successes. Well, that's actually three successes because you're going to get a focus on that, which is still good because you'll generate a uh, a momentum. Um, and then he realizes that this is a bad situation, so he's going to turn and fire on the um, the humanoid. Uh, and hits three times. So that's what he needed. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he fires again, and the creature drops. Like, unconscious drops. Um, and then, so, yes. So, uh, the humanoid drops to the ground in the middle of, the, like, the hallway. And as it does, it seems to shroud like the Jim Hadar do. Um... And it's, I'd say it's probably about that time. I'm not going to make you guys make a bunch of engineer rolls. I know that nobody over on the runabout is an engineer, and that just seems like a mean thing to do to you. Uh, ab about that time, you reset the isolinear chips, and you do all the things. It looks like this whole transporter system has been jury-rigged. Like, MacGyver got on the, the runabout and just, like, through gum and wiring, set this whole thing up. Like... The, you don't yeah. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing with federation systems they do understand how to use power systems to do what they want and isn't how that to more of a stargate them. thing than a star trek thing for macgyver to show up <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly uh but it's about that time that as you kind of uh fix the transporter that also turns off the communication block um and you beam back over where are you guys beaming to uh probably, probably the trans I mean, would do if we don't hear anything about what's going on over there, then I would assume the transporter room. I don't know what everybody yeah. else thinks, but well, uh, can we get a call over there when we realize the uh, yeah, once the transporter's back up and the communication block is yeah, over it's like, out, yeah, three to transport. Uh, yeah, he be you get beamed right into the transporter room, uh, and out kind of out of the uh, bridge comes kind of jogging for a person with very short legs uh the commander uh he says there's uh been phaser fire down outside of uh the captain's room yep. rajan starts so, off at a run yeah well <laughs> low boy so uh the four of you get down there ju like just after the phaser fire is finished uh marzon uh, what did you do after that did you hand over the phaser to the security officer or are you still holding it yeah, I hand it over to him, and it's like you did that. <laughs> uh, do you do you check on Minkler? I assume. Yes. He is. Uh, he is knocked pretty bad. Uh, he's got like a what's going to be a pretty bad bruise from where he bounced his face off of the wall and a cut on like his lip. Um, can Can we get him a helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, one of the ones that says Spock on the front of with the light. Yeah, it'll just yeah. say Minkler. Yeah. <laughs> 
It'll also warn us when he's coming. <laughs> little siren. Yeah. Tell yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll tell him it's special for stealth missions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like when you uh, put a bell on your cat so you know where it is in the house. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the the light is actually a button, so when he falls down, it taps, and it's like a life alert bracelet. <laughs> straight, straight so, to the midday. <laughs> so, uh, you guys get down there, and as you kind of come up on the area that, um, you come up with the area of the captain's uh, quarters, uh, and there is not anything on the floor, but you're aware that there is something. Like you could see an almost an outline. Uh, could of I a body? Could I use my um sensory thing to scan uh, through? You 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 could, and when you go to access that, it it recognizes nothing. It doesn't see it at all. Can I like, try my? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Like it sees it less than your natural eye does. If that makes sense. Okay. Mm. Can I try scanning it with the the area with the tricorder to see what we get? You don't get anything. There's mm-hmm. nothing there. I'm going to check on the captain poke and the it with security my officer cane. while they're doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you poke it with your cane. There's definitely a body there, and it is a dense body. Like, right, we're so talking we're like, like, like you would expect like a rock to feel like. All right, so we're going to need some flour. Some flour. You sprinkled the flour over the <laughs> invisible creatures. <laughs> uh so Rosrin, you get over to the captain. He seems uh he's a little disheveled. Like his hair is just a little out of place. Um but he seems to be standing there in the hallway. Uh he's helped Minkler up. Minkler has clearly been in a scuffle or on, on the business end of a scuffle. Or is he still out? Is oh no, he he's coming? awake now. Uh the scene is over, so he's back. Um Rosrin gives him a disappointed a job, father man. look. That's what Rosrin does. Rosrin just gives Minkler a disappointed father look. Like uh, I just he like looks at you, he's like, I was supposed to watch the captain. I don't I don't know. Hey, Minkler did a great job. He <laughs> got in the way of that attack, saved we'll me, trade you. He conveniently <laughs> put himself positioned just right so that I could get his phaser and make sure that we didn't die. He did great. Rajan raises his eyebrow like he's not buying any of this, but whatever. Lieutenant, does, so, he, need, uh, <laughs> does he need help now, or is he good for the moment? Check, check him out. I'll go over uh, and scan Minkler. Uh, he actually has an injury um, from getting hit that hard. Uh, he got knocked pretty hard. I think this is his third one of the game. Yeah, oh, yeah, so good. he's getting beat up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um. So what happened, Captain? That thing, whatever that is, I've never seen anything like that before. Um, just appeared right behind Minkler. Can I get um? At the beginning of the war, Rex, where were? What was your uh position? Where were you at in the fleet? Um, during, uh, let's see, I was on the victory. I think, um, what yeah, were you doing we're on there? the victory during the Dominion War. What were you doing there? Uh, con officer. Okay. Uh, so let's have, uh, just Chevrin, let's have you roll a, uh, insight command. Um, none of your focuses are going to apply though. All right. What's the difficulty? Uh, two. And this is something you guys probably want. Just an FYI. All right. Um, could I use my value? Every problem has a solution. Mm. I mean, without knowing this information, it's hard for me to gauge. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Um, let's, yeah, no, not really. Not so much. Okay. The other one I could think about is everyone deserves a second chance. But We are are at five momentum though. So you do have that ability. I will go ahead and spend three momentum. Is there any way we could assist in any way, or is this not really? This is a this is a knowledge base that would be outside of anybody else. Out of the other outside of the other three characters, Uh, what is the only one that might have had that information? Yeah, I'm gonna spend three. Okay, so you get two dice. dice. Yep. And what's the roll? It is insight command. 
Insight Command. I stand a pretty good chance of this. Yeah. They're all 20s. <laughs> Come um, on. It, it, it's three successes and one 20. Yes. Uh, I'm going to take no. that complication as threat. Um, so uh, you remember reading, like before the war started, before the Dominion was really known about, you remember reading a report about uh, a species that could shroud that came to Deep Space Nine. The, the only member of that species that was ever met was called, called itself Tosk, which is also the name of its species. And it is part of a hunt. So members of the Dominions, and he is technically also a member of the Dominion, as much as any race that is, <laughs> that is enslaved is. Other another species of the Dominion called the Dry, which you know are the uh, kind of the genetic uh, the genetic powerhouse as far as manipulating genetics and uh, augmenting them, and they're the creators of the the uh, Jimadar. Uh, the Dry hunt the Tosk, and the Tosk's abilities are usually the ability to hide and to set up traps and to do what they have to to survive. But it, the the report itself was pretty high level. Yeah. Um, it's not something that just got passed around um, and with nobody else being in command at that point or security. It, it's not something that would have been readily available. All right. Um, I will uh, share this information and also put in a request for the documentation. Well, you should have it on the. It would just be command code. Like okay. You, you could get access to it. Uh, we are at uh, two momentum and four threat. Just for the the record. Thanks. Um, well, Is that yeah, two? No, just, what now? Is that two momentum counting the one I'm adding for my last roll? Oh nope. That and then three momentum. There you go. Excellent. Um, so uh, yeah, th basically the tasks are. The, the toss could just hide. The, yeah. What's known about the dry is not very deep. They're um, loyal members of the Dominion. They're treated very, very well. Um, they're the ones that made sure the Jem'Hadar are, uh, you know, addicted to Ketracel White and keep them that way. Um, they're the ones that they stole. They actually stole the shrouding from the Tosk and integrated it into the genetics of the Jem'Hadar. Um, but yeah, these he is a hypothetically a member of the Dominion. Probably the Dry would tell you he's a property of the Dominion. Hmm. All right. Um, do we know if they have it? Well, we should probably move him to the brig. Yeah, I'll help. I'll help with that. We'll just drag him to the brig. Yeah. Uh, he is between the two of you. You can do it. That's not a problem. But he is heavier than a Klingon would be for the exact same size. Like yeah. he is a dense, dense boy. That's why we need a Klingon and an Andorian to lift him. <laughs> there we <Yeah>. go. <laughs> uh, you get him set up in the brig. Uh, he, you can already see, like just doing a quick scan, that he's going to be fine and he'll be up and moving in a little bit. But it's probably not a good idea to be in the brig with him when he wakes. No, 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 no. Um, um, but I'm so assuming can, I'll relay we that can to do the commander. Oh. Yes. Uh, can we do scans while he's in the brig? Yeah. So, uh, what, uh, Keed, what you finally realize is that the living tissue is not scannable. The dead tissue is what you picked up and was scannable. So you um, end up like scraping just a little bit off, uh, a, okay. a little bit of like skin off. And once you do, it matches the exact same thing. What you were reading is that the Tosk have been genetically manipulated into these. They're not even predators. They're they're like right. super prey. Right. Um, and so like there, you do see that there are uh, hints that there are probably uh, cranial reinforcement like the Cardassians have. Definitely some Jim Hadar in here. There's some other stuff that you've not noticed at all before, or you've not seen before at all, and probably 
isn't even in the Federation database. Um, it does not match the DNA exactly that's in the database from the encounter on Deep Space Nine. It's clear that this one has been further modified beyond that. Yeah, because they would have, like, when the Cardassians would have joined the Dominion, they would have added some of that DNA profile to improve. And, and there are other DNA. things in there, too. Okay. Um, yeah, there... And, and you, it almost looks like there's uh, genetic memories put in there, skills almost, of engineering. Hmm. Interesting. Well, to make it more, I'm assuming they're constantly making them more difficult to hunt because that's the quote unquote fun part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would have, I would have hoped with the dominion failing or being con or it, the dominion at the end of the war, the, this wouldn't still be happening, but apparently it is. Mm-hmm. So the big question is, where is the hunter? Uh, can I get uh, Rex and Chevron to both give me, um, Let's say insight command rolls. Okay. Uh, difficulty uh, is one. And if uh, f- protocol, Starfleet protocol applies. Okay. All right. Insight command? Yeah. I have, two. Bad. I have a focus on Starfleet protocol. Oh, I do as well. <laughs> oh, cool. Good, 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 good. I've got one success. One success. Okay. I think I have four. I have a six and a two. Uh, six is not underneath your. No, you just have three, which is still good. Yeah. Uh, so that'll get you two momentum. Um, the Tosk were not covered in the Treaty of Bajor. They are subject to whatever the Dominion laws are, and you're not outside of. You're not in the Dominion space, but also violation of dominion custom could cause an incident so there's there's a it's a fine line you're gonna have to walk here if someone comes looking for him gotcha the better question then commander is where is it ship at i'm assuming it was the wreckage that they had found yeah yeah yeah. i assume it, it came aboard shrouded when they brought in the the wreck I would assume. But then, so did First Officer just surprise this toss? Um, and, and that's what happened? If so, then why would they put the, the you, you know, try to frame the, the cat? Yeah, I think there's some more here that we don't know yet. Because that doesn't stand in the profile of the task. Right, exactly. Like, yeah. it doesn't fit what they would be trying to do, at least according to what the commander has told us. Um, would... So you're all there. Uh, has anyone it alerted the commander who went back to the the bridge? Oh, um, about what's yeah, going on. We'll loop him in. If okay. we hadn't before, we will now. Uh, he, uh, you hear him uh, order uh, the operations manager to start scanning for Dominion uh, engine uh, signatures just in case. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, So, yeah. So he starts scanning. Uh, The Tosk uh, seems to be waking up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do we know if they... uh, in the previous, did we know if they spoke any languages? Yeah, they spoke uh, Galactic Common, I guess is what it is. Your translators can translate them. Okay. Um, but uh, as soon as he starts to wake up, uh, he uh, re-shrouds, and now you can't even see an outline. He's just completely gone. And you can kind of hear a little bit of movement here and there. And then the force field on the brig uh, ripples as though someone is like touching it, but not like pushing on it. Just kind of getting an idea of what it feels like. Yeah. Um, Commander, do we want to knock it out? I can. Um, we can flood the, flood the brig with axonol and render it unconscious. We should track on particles. Uh, let's keep that as a. Backup, uh, I'd like to try and speak with it first. 
Understood. And I will, you know, hello. Yeah. My name is uh, Commander Chevren with the, you know, United uh, Federation. The, uh, the like, the sensation on the the brig fe- energy field, a uh, force field kind of intensifies, like it's pu- being pushed on and then it mm-hmm. stops and then it starts at a different place, um, kind of against the other wall, almost up to where it like seems with the wall, like it's being traced. Yeah. Um, let's keep phasers ready on yeah. stun. Oh, Roswin's already way ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> Roswin's there. Roswin's like, I'm Roswin's ready. has got like a tripod machine gun set up and <laughs> one of the big <laughs> Try it. Try it. I'm dare you. I'm begging you. Try it. The TOS phase arrive with the weird coils on the side. Of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh full auto. <laughs> After after a couple of minutes of like like the whatever the hand that's that's tra- like tracing this goes all mm-hmm. the way around you don't hear anything from it and then it stops and it decloaks or it deshrouds kind of in front of you uh, mm-hmm. not it's still in the brig <laughs> he, he yeah. didn't break it. that would be great <laughs> no he uh he he deshrouds kind of in the middle of the brig he says uh, I am Tosk release me um we need to ask you some questions i will answer your questions once you release me um unfortunately that's not the way this works we just have a few questions and then we will discuss where to go from here ask your questions how long have you been aboard the ship? A few of your cycles. Did you discharge a phaser on this ship? Yes. Did you... Um, I'm basically going over the story, trying to figure out if Tosk is the one who killed the first officer. Uh, give me uh, insight and command. Uh, we'll call it insight medicine. Uh, and Ooh. I would say that Keed could assist and uh, Keed, your stress disorders would apply. Yep. Um, is it possible for him to roll and for me to assist as he sits on the sideline listening? Yeah. Um, while I'm sort of trying to lead. Yeah, the... that's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, difficulties two. Okay, medicine. Well, I'm going to buy. I'm going to use a momentum to buy a dice just to be okay. on the safe side. That puts, right. down well, to, team, so. that puts us down to four momentum. You oh. said this was a, a what plus medicine? Insight. Insight. All right. Medicine. Ah, I did get a success. Uh, <laughs> oh no! What? What is it? What is it? Two successes and a complication. Three successes? Uh, two successes in a complication. Two successes. So that's three total successes, correct? Yep. That'll put us back at uh, five momentum. Uh, complication. <laughs> well, that that's perfect complication. So you, uh, in talking with him, he admits to having exchanged, uh, had, had a physical exchange with the first officer, where uh, the first officer caught him using the first officer's codes to open the uh, the uh, armory locker. When the first officer moved to stop him, he uh, tried tried to grab him, and the the first officer knocked it. Lieutenant Horgan knocked his arm, and it banged against the the wall, which is where you picked up the the DNA, and somehow the Tosk was able to pull the phaser and shoot him. Okay. But that was not, the intention was not to kill. Okay. Hmm. Um, What you're grasping uh, Dr. Haskins is that 
this was an act of survival, not necessarily of malice. Right. The complication, though. <laughs> uh, Force field fails. Your uh, commander, Chevron, your uh, your combat chirps. Uh, Chevron, go ahead. Uh, this is Commander Glove Zhang. Uh, there is a ship uh, coming into the system. They are already hailing us. They claim that we have Dominion property that we must hand over. Mm. Well, be the hunter's cap, Commander. It very well could. It most likely is. Um, Unfortunately, with our the truce that we have signed, this species is not protected under what? No, uh, our illustrious channel uh, hosts Rook and Rasp say, "Space them, space." Em. <laughs> space. Do you want them back? <laughs> wow! So, uh, yeah, so, ooh, actually. Instead of space them, you spock them. You just load it into a photon torpedo and fire it. No, oh, no. Sir, hmm. they're firing senior officers at us. <gasps> <laughs> so it's a great episode of The Simpsons. Uh, um, so, what are the actual? What is the treaty state? Um, that the Federation will respect any and all laws applicable. Um, they. Halata might be able to, to like talk the way talk her way out of this, but she is not in a position to do that right now. Yeah. Um you could bog it down with Federation protocol, but it would be a lot of work to do that. But you have to have the property in hand to hand it over. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. We want um, to the task what it wants to do. Well, I'm assuming it wants to run. I mean that that would be when 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 uh Chevron says that it's clear that the task is almost balanced on the balls of its feet the whole time. It's ready to run at any second. Well, um, I have do an have, idea. Do we have enough proof to clear the captain first? Oh, yes, we have. Um... I think we have more than enough evidence. I'm sure we video recorded talking to the Tosk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, so let's uh, turn off the recording device. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chagrin... Rosalind just goes over and unplugs it from the wall, you know. <laughs> yeah. Casual, like. Yeah. Um, I will send um, Rosrin and I believe our captain, because I'm still in control of the ship. Mm -hmm. out to go check on the bridge because the captain should speak to the Dominion. Okay. Then I am going to kind of look at Keed. I'm going to place my phaser on stun mode in front of the cell and I'm going to deactivate the force field. Uh, can you give me... You're not using any words, correct? Um, I have... I am telling, I'm making sure he knows the Dominion are on their way, and sure. also the to the nearest, like, escape pod from the ship. Sure. Uh, can you give me a command presence roll? I would also point out that this is going to interact with your waging piece of value. Yep. Okay. I will go ahead and pop that. Okay. And I, I'd also say that this is also, everyone deserves a second chance. Sure, sure. So, um, you said presence command? Yeah. All right. There's no way I could talk this into be daring command, is there? Pretty ballsy plan. I'd let you roll daring security, but not daring command. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's still going to be a better roll. Yeah, so I got the two from the determination... And then I got three successes. So five. Okay, that'll cap your pool. The, you turn the force field off. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I... Um, how many did I earn from that? Uh, 
three. Three, I am going to spend two of those motivations to remove a complication. To remove a complication. Mm -hmm. uh, you can create an advantage. I don't know if you can remove okay. a complication. I will create an advantage. Okay, that's fair. Um, so the Tosk picks up on what you're saying very quickly. Yeah. Uh, as soon as the force seal goes down, he snatches the phaser up, presses two buttons, and fires hitting both of you. And you both go down. Like, you got the minkler is, sprinkler. Yeah. <laughs> part <laughs> of it is you, you like you were planning on like, oh, oh no, I have been shot. But like it is a good shot and it is a solid shot. Yeah. Um and uh when you guys both kind of wake up in just a second with a little bit of a headache, he's gone. I hate me. I hate those things. <laughs> uh Rex, uh you get to the bridge. Um and uh, a uh, another hail comes in uh, from the ship. On visual. Uh, so what you see is kind of a green-skinned uh, creature with like longer hail hair, kind of scales here, but then like the forehead is ridged. Um, and he says, "I am." Uh, Garrett of the Dry, you have a Tosk on your ship. Return him. I'm Captain Rex of the Binary. Can you describe this Tosk? He looks over at the uh, one of the the uh, at his pilot. The ship goes from where it's at to within weapons range because they like flip the warp drive off and on, on and off real quick. And uh, almost immediately the, the they fire at you. But it's just like almost a glancing blow off of your shields. And their ship comes to a dead stop in front of you. And, and he says, I am Garrett of the Dry. You are in violation of the Treaty of Bajor. You have property of the Dominion. Turn it over or we will come get it. I am Captain Marzon Rex of the USS Binary of the Federation. I'm attempting to give you your property as soon as you can tell me what it is. Uh, can you give me uh, a presence <laughs> command for inspiration with, with inspiration as a focus? Okay. And I'll, I'll spend the momentum. How many do we have? Uh, we, you, you're capped right now at six. Oh, sure. All right. What, what am I rolling? What do I need? Uh, you're going to need, uh, we'll call it three successes. Okay, I'll spend two momentum then. Cool. Uh, you mean one or three? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll spend one for three dice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because you said it's, uh, what, inspiration working on that? Uh, yeah, you're, so you'll, you're going to crit on fives. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, eight, seven, three. So four successes, so that's going to get you one back. Cool. Uh, the uh, your op uh, your ops manager uh, mutes the your end of the conversation, and he says, uh, "Commander, their weapons are far more powerful than ours. I'm not sure how quick how how long we can last in a fight with them." I'm aware of that. Thank you very much. And then just like beeps the button again without a without a concern, and uh, he is. In a gray jumpsuit, it looks like this, and he kind of holds out a uh, like a little disc, and a, a holographic visual appears of a Tosk. So that would be the invisible thing that's running around my ship. If you'll allow us onto your ship, we will catch it. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. Will you give us time to see if we can round it up? You have five minutes. Cut off screen. Okay. The the your your acting first or first officer just kind of looks at you, and then looks back at the the screen, and waits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I have I have like comms and stuff now? Right. I guess. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Commander Chevrin. There's, there's no answer. There's, there's no answer. 
Your husband's like, oh, crap. And he's going to head down there where they were. If they get no answer, he's like, I knew I shouldn't have left. I knew I shouldn't have left them. Like, so, uh, <laughs> Rosrin probably comes in just as they're waking up. Uh, Rex, did you go with her? Uh, yes, we'll both okay. head that way. Yeah. Uh, you get there just as they're kind of like standing up. Uh, it's clear they've been phasered. There is a phaser in the hallway on the ground, though. Hmm. <clears throat> It escaped. Severin. Severin. Yes, Captain. What happened? Um, it somehow escaped, acquired my phaser, and laid us out. That's fast. I, I didn't even get a chance to fire off a shot before it hit both of us. I'll call the bridge. Uh, has anything left our ship? Uh, not yet. Although it looks like your you've just authorized shuttle launches. I did. Yeah, these are your command codes, sir. The bays are opening. <laughs> looks like three of our shuttles are preparing to to launch. Okay. Um. Hmm. Can you open a hail for me? To what? Where? What, what am I hailing? To the other ship. To the dry? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you just visual or audio only. Uh, this is Garrett of the dry. This is Captain Rex. It appears your Tosk has escaped and is attempting to flee my ship. We chased him, and he is now leaving. We will destroy whichever shuttle he is on or all of them and then they uh the 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 line goes dead and you hear your uh, first officer uh they are maneuvering around the ship Jeren, you want to tell me a little bit more about what's going on um that's pretty much what happened? He escaped. Okay. So is this a case of um, making it not our problem? Is that what you were going for? Honoring cultural obligations that we don't agree with? Avoiding incidents that will destroy our treaty without open murder. Nicely done. All I don't right. know. If it were me, I'd use those shuttles as distraction. <laughs> if it were me. I will um I will click on my com badge to sure. talk to the ship that's going out. Uh, the, so all three shuttles are getting well, ready to launch? No, the Dominion ship. Oh, okay. Who is this? This is Garrett of the Dry. This is Commander Chevrin, captain of the USS Binary. What are you doing to my ship? I'm not doing anything to your ship. We are preparing to acquire the Tosk. You have fi you fired upon a Federation vessel. It was a warning fire, and you and your ship is fully aware of that. Are, I am the captain, and I am not aware of that. It's confusing. How captain, dare we've you? We've already spoken with the captain of your ship. A man named Rex. Rex is in our brig at this point. He's in Federation custody and not to be trusted. The property of the D Dominion is on your ship preparing to leave. We will acquire it. You have nothing to be concerned about. We are under... I have everything to be concerned about because we are under an investigation and my reputation is at stake. That sounds um, like a Federation problem, not a Dominion can, problem. Um, I'm going to attempt to intimidate him with my reputation. Uh, sure, go for it. Uh, it's going to be presence oh. and command. Um, yep. I for I forgot. I have an ability that I wanted to use. Sure. Which is veteran. Uh, I spent my determination. Sure. So I get to roll an action oh, yeah, yeah. die. Roll that. Yeah, roll that. 
<laughs> and I get to keep my determination. Fantastic. And I am going to use my determination on this one for every problem has a solution. Sure, sure, sure. So what what kind of a role would this be? Uh, it's going to be... Um... It's going to be presence security. Presence security? Yeah. All right. Uh, can I wrap them around with some uh, Federation protocol? Not if you want to intimidate. Okay. It's, re- it's not very intimidating when you start reading laws to them. I get that. Yeah. Uh, command um, tactics, maybe? Command tactics. Mm, no, not so much. Okay. I just have to try. Yeah, no. I'm going to spend three threat. To I'm going to spend extra dice. I'm going to spend three momentum. Sure, sure. So that, that is two our, extra dice. Puts our thread at one and our momentum at three. All right. You know, so you said it by threat. <clears throat> you said it was a uh, presence plus security. command security. Security. Um, I have three success. Uh, yeah, I have three successes. Um, I have. Two for the determination roll. I rolled one, one, a seven, and a twelve. So that's four success, five successes. Nice. Nice. T- t- so that's two momentum you'll gain. All right. Uh, basically, I'm just going to try to keep him in an argument with me. So he has to choose <laughs> either to just leave and uh, lose face or stay here and argue with me until I get bored with him. <laughs> Tell him, uh, God. My ability to make this an us problem. That's <laughs> <laughs> you should tell it. Uh, so the the three shuttles all kind of launch at the same time. Uh, they all three go to warp almost immediately. Uh, once they go to warp, the hailing frequencies are closed, and the dry ship warps off after them. Captain, uh, I just turn over. Uh, Captain Rex, this is Commander Chevrin of uh, the Federation, United Federation, returning control of the USS Binary, and I will give my command code. Fantastic. And you, Commander? And I'm uh, assuming you'll return in kind? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you get a chi- chime from the bridge again, uh, Rex. This is Rex. Uh, one of our escape pods has uh, jettisoned. Are we concerned about that? I'm not scanning any life signs on it. I'm just no, we're not. That's unfortunate that uh, there was a malfunction, sir. Yes, it is. Uh, run a level one diagnostic on all the remaining life pods, please. Absolutely. Well, we should go after our uh, shuttlecraft here shortly, too. Um, yes. Uh, why doesn't the um, Serenitis come help with that? It's we not, much appreciate it. It's not a bad idea. Uh, so uh, yeah, the 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 ship disappears. The the escape pod goes off in its own direction, and uh, I think that's actually a good place for us to stop tonight, as uh, the four of you have thwarted <laughs> the dry, annoyed the dry at least. <laughs> We've harried them. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> new, new hail, who dis? <laughs> uh, new, new hail. New hail, who dis? Who dis? Oh, that is, that is absolutely terrible, and I kind of love it. So, fine. Um, that needs to be an emote. We're like, Tosk, what? We don't, huh? <laughs> so, uh, we I will are... happily tell you if he's aboard our ship, if you just explain to me, what is a ship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and i have to thank you for the pleasure of being stunned mm-hmm. uh, so i'll buy you a drink <laughs> next week uh we are back with uh judgment pronounced where we will meet the satori nucracy uh Ooh. so please uh come back next week for that that's gonna be uh chevron will be back but we, we're gonna have three other players coming in uh to round out that cast uh, so we'll have a lot of zeke and charlie nice. they'll be they're all fantastic players so definitely come back for that uh that'll be 7 p.m uh normal time next week here on rook and rasp 
I've forgotten which one of these windows is doing the thing I wanted to do. Oh, it was already up. Wow, I'm real smart. I got this whole thing going on. Uh, so uh, yeah, we've got uh, sh- we got shows coming up this week. Uh, Mistborn on Saturday. Uh, Illuminated Page Horror on the Orn Express premieres on Sunday. Uh, Growing Shadows is a week from Thursday. And then we've got on the 15th, we've got Kids on Bikes for Seriously Let's Play. And then on the 18th is 7th Age, 7th C, 7th C, different game, 7th C uh, premiering as well. Uh, so come out for all of those. Don't forget, we've got Facebook and Twitter, Discord and YouTube. You should be checking all those out. YouTube has all of our first, the first half of the season. So if you missed any of that, you should go back and watch it because I'm going to tell you right now, uh, th- these aren't one-off shows or one-off episodes. They all tie in, all of them. This even ties in to a larger story that we've got working. So mm. definitely want to check those out um, over on our YouTube channel. You can also ke- check out our uh, first three seasons of Illuminated Page, the first two seasons of Growing uh, Shadows. You could see some of our Tomes of Isolation, which are fantastic one uh, one-person story uh, RPGs that we did over there. And then what we just ended was X-Crawl. You can watch all 10 episodes of that there. Um, and then over on Discord, we talk to each other a lot about goofy stuff, uh, exchange ideas, just have a good time. Um, and if you want to be part of the community, we would be happy to have you. Uh, mm-hmm. You just want to follow that Discord link here in the chat that I'm going to put in now. I should have done uh, YouTube already, but I'm real bad about this. So we're going to do YouTube now. Uh, and, and, you know, keep an eye on our Twitter for any uh, any announcements so you can follow us there and uh, see when we're going live with stuff. I want to thank our, my cast tonight. They've been fantastic, especially a big thanks to David for coming in and playing Mars on Rex. Um, when we originally started this, it was going to be a, a podcast, and uh, David was the first officer of the Serenitis, and uh, now he has been promoted and has his own ship um, that he murders people on, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Training uh, younger Trill to like yeah, go yeah. yeah, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, definitely a big thank you to David. Uh, we appreciate you coming out, dressing up, and uh, buying a Starfleet vessel, according to your background. Um, <laughs> but uh, this has been great tonight. Thank you guys very much. We will catch you on Saturday for Mistborn. Yep. Otherwise, you guys have a great <laughs> night. Night, everybody. Night. night.